Uh, my apology because of my personal reasons we are late really sorry for that yes. sometimes that helps also mentioning in the other course and to be thank you for making it easy <laughs> Uh, serial number 16 logics may I mention mm. uh, can I uh, request for next week if it happens to your logics okay. 23rd please your logics I'm immensely serial number 14 you yes. have any instructions to appear serial number 14 is it in a here for the respondent would you like uh, I'll uh, file the vakalat number by today he shall find his work today. Any of uh, uh, are you on the part of the case? But any time they put the book, it's a fresh admission. He's so sure of your capability, <laughs> so he just wants to be there. Okay, let it be, let it go next week, okay. 23rd. Oblige. Yeah. Item number 24. My love. Yes. This matter can be disposed of since my lord, we have already paid the all the dues and the attachment is also released. My lord, that document we have put up by way of additional affidavit, which is from page 296. And two documents, which is at page 298. As per since I'm I'm sorry, my lord, 395, my lord, in court copy. My lord, is 395. Well, that's a further affidavit on behalf of the petitioner. 295. 295. No, 395 is a document. It's a general information form number 5. Uh, is an extra B you are referring to or affidavit you are referring to? Uh, affidavit okay, well, dated 24th November yes. 2022. Hmm. Two page affidavit. Correct. In paragraph five of that affidavit, we have stated that it will be just expedient to dispose of that. That property have been released also, and do document releasing the property is at next annexure A, my lord. Who is so appearing in this matter? Yes, we the So no cause of what. It's a special civil application 6015 of 2000. Petition is before this court with the following prayers. You can uh, write down the prayers. Uh, senior Advocate Mr. Navati. Uh, before that, you can see the further affidavit on behalf of the petitioner is uh, filed on, in November 2022, which is indicative of the fact that. Uh, the civil suit 109 of 2003 <coughs> is um, preferred before the city civil court. The payment of amount under direct tax Vivat Savishwas Act 2020 is made. The response number two pursuant thereto has passed an order on 9-11-22 removing the attachment of Smith Bangalows being the subject uh, of property. And accordingly, the petitioner has withdrawn the civil suit. 109 of 2000. The documents produced along with the affidavit also <coughs> confirms these aspects. Therefore, the petition can be disposed of recording the order dated 9 11 2022, which provides thus you can reproduce this part uh, supplying the information this and pura or 299 you heard the learned senior advocate Ms. Sudhir Naravati and uh, learned uh, senior standing counsel Mrs. Kalpana Rawal will appear Mrs. Kalpana Rawal assisted by learned advocate Mr. Karan who has no objection to this the, the explicit uh, request is for uh, you want withdrawal or you want us to withdraw? Uh, to be disposed of. Okay. No the, in wake of 
the communication date at 9 11 22 and the affidavit which has been filed by the petition the petition is disposed of as no cause survives no. Hello, I will be obliged if leadership may also state that Malwa, the subject property that is Meet Bungalow, which is in that nine. You said that. No. Obliged. Mr. Jainish Shah is there. The supply uh, the office uh, is uh, has put up a note uh, copy of the petitions have not been supplied let the same be done without fail uh honor report 2820 the returnable date is extended to 6th of uh, february if not done if if the copies have not been supplied matter without further reference shall be dismissed for want of prosecution hmm. sorry we have we have already filed pushes pertaining to that we are retiring from the matter we filed the pushes on 6 january Where is your uh, uh, thing to your clients of having handed over the papers back? I don't have any instructions. Where is Miss Vaibhavi Parikh? Please oh, call her. She's on her legs before NCLT, her ladyships. That's not a ground when you're before the division bench of the High Court. Please tell her. Yes. All right. Obliged. Thirty-seven. Leadership on behalf of uh, Mr. Omkar. I'm just concerned about the side. I'm interested in this matter. What do you want? Uh, accommodation for the leadership and Mr. Dabey. Please put the leadership What are these matters about? Uh, leadership order came to be passed in the matter, and uh, even after that, the EO. Uh, Ordered an assessment order. So technically, there is a contempt. To that effect, uh, has to be filed. You need to file, they need to file. We need to bring to the notice. To the notice. Mm -hmm. They have stayed and uh, yet the order. Yet, yet, yet. When was the order passed? It was in 2021, I suppose. This is 9 12 2019. After that, they passed. On, uh, How did you pass on this order to them? Any idea? File an affidavit. Special C21211 of 2019. According to what's your good name? Akash Singh. Akash Singh. Mr. Akash Singh appearing for Mr. Omkar Sidhavi. This Arsh this court that. Although the court uh, specifically granted stay in favor of the petitioner on 9 12 2019, the assessing officer appears to have passed an order of assessment for the assessment year 2012 13. He needs to bring it to the notice of the court as this may amount to the breach of the court's order. Uh, who will be appearing for the no no from the other side would you be appearing okay mrs kalpana rao you find out i will find you find out also the learned senior standing council representing the respondent authority is requested to gather the details from the concern assessing officer let the matter be posted next week 23rd this and the next matter both both the matters. In both matters, they've passed the order. All right. Similar order in 30 also. Yes, sir. 38 to 48. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, Miss Mr. Kar. Since the notice to the dead person. So, so far as forty is concerned, notice has been issued upon the legal end. Upon? It's the legal end. Serial number four zero. No, it's talking about fifty one. Fifty one. Let me verify if it is dead person. As in when it is called. But it's serial number sixty. Could I ask for the priority? Six zero. That is also against a non-existing company. Uh, 61 is for the VSV application which is now settled by our court and uh, headed by Justice Devani. My notes have passed the order. Okay. Have passed order. 62 is there is no draft assessment order. Okay. Both be giving a priority. Uh, you would be appearing. Uh, in both, I'll verify the papers. Just me. verify the papers. Yes. If you need quotes paper, you can take quotes paper. Yes. I'm sorry, Manoj. 65 is three matters where the uh, notice of 148 has been issued after the audit objection. We took the ground. Simultaneously, we also passed the RTI application. We have received the answer in RTI order where they have attached the communication with the audit department where the AO has not accepted the audit objection. So on that ground itself, it can go. 66 is 66, 67, 68 are also again the, the non-existing parties, which is same as serial number one. So probably along with serial number one itself can be. Uh, 65 lordships. If I, uh, my learned friend has just sought priority. If I can just request for tomorrow, uh, I'm sorry for the inconvenience. I'll just have to take instructions. 65? Yes, lordships. So my learned friend is going to appear in so I'll be appearing. You are not appearing? No. Okay. Ms. Maithili Mehta appears instead of learned uh, senior standing counsel, Mr. Varun Patel. In all the 65, she requires a day's time to be kept tomorrow in the first 20 matters. Please, Sir, Sir. 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 Saying it's a covered matter. Yes, yes. I, the only thing is, if I can just. Uh, yeah, you can give. I'll, I'll give that the order. But serial number 72 is also against deceased person. 72. But serial number 92 hmm. is for the refund. They are not issuing with the refund. Well, the instruction is that well, they have not completed the formality. They are supposed to get the name as registered as legal as. Without that, no system will not allow. So they are legal as. Reply has already been. They are legal as. Legal as. And they are seeking refund of TDS credit. Therefore, I will explain it is very much, uh, Income has been taxed in my name, but I'm not getting the credit of that. The husband's income is taxed. I have paid the tax, but they are not giving the refund of the same to me. Tax is collected from wife. Yes. Yeah, originally, when TDS was deducted, it was in the name of wife. Subsequently, she expired, and therefore, the legal has filed a return. Now he is claiming there is a procedure. He has to get his name. So, what, what is? Did you did you intimate them that this is a procedure which reply, needs to be followed? Mention that how no, no. That is a reply because they approached this court, yes. but then when they asked for it, and when you never gave it to them. Did you intimate them that this is the reason? System. As I said, well, TDS is a different system and return process is a different system. It is impossible for me to. That that is a, now something new ground has been come up that it is impossible. Let him say that why it is impossible. I'll take I the Mr. Patel, we just wanting to know that when somebody comes today, I am coming to you. Please, As somebody who doesn't know anything about this process, I am an heir. I want to have that refund. Have you communicated to them that you need to follow this and therefore it is now not possible there was no inquiry from them that they only file a written rules today it is not that help desk available i'm not sure what is that if they approach well, there might Mr. be Patel, I, but I, I would I will, I'll, I'll, from the record i'll point out we will, we will just we'll see about it but please bear it in mind those in the authority 
must always ensure that the common man and when we are talking about the common man we literally mean common man and this is all right if it is if it is explained and if it is there on the portal fair enough but it's not here the, the I'll, it's I'll, not here the lawyers you know who are who are inter say arguing it is a common way sometimes to get the things done and what what is the thing is that one of so many cd we work on a system computerized system the eo if you has have limited scope of interference and that we know exceptional if you have sufficient details available on the portal fair enough I'll but if you do not have that no arguments on that you know then you have to improvise your mock portal <laughs> challenge and the order is already passed um just just a moment mr patel what is this entire group of uh, from 97 mr dinal shah also is a very serious thing it's regarding 153a what we and see matlab how to consider whether 10 year or 9 year this is what the control this is uh, one such matter is before the supreme court also uh, No, no, no. No? It probably was heard earlier before different bands and some of could not come to them now. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, Lordship, serial number one one two and one one three. I am requesting for priority in this matter. This way, this way. One hundred and ten is the matter where notice of one two three C is under challenge, hmm. and my lords have given a limited uh, notice, but not the IR and the order has been passed now, which is also now put on record. Hmm. I have to make out my case as to why the notice and order both are bad. Okay. Yes, Lordship. So I will be filing a, a reply to the draft amendment which my learned friend had tendered. If I can just serve a copy of the reply, Lord. Yes. Would you like to? Uh, oh, we'll argue the matter. Okay. Yes, you were saying. Ah, uh, your Lord, she's serial number one one two and one one three. I am requesting for priority in this matter. Department has issued so calls notice to the petitioner, ah, uh, which they have to comply in less than twenty four hours. Okay. Oblige, oblige. ंग Coming. I will inquire with either Mr. Nitin Rawal or Mr. Keep it somewhere on nineteen. Hmm. SCA four zero four one or fourteen. Matter to be posted on nineteen. You can bring it to the notice of this. Yeah, right. Okay. Then some one one four, one one five, one one six, and one one seven. These four uh, matters are against the interim board, where after the. Disbandment of the settlement commission. They are not passing the one of those same. matters. Senior Advocate Mr. Subhakar. Yes, yes, yes. In this yes. matter, I urgency. got the instruction uh, to appear on behalf of settlement commission. Though the direction is to file reply on the thirteen, but I got the papers on thirteen only. For so, many cases, for two weeks time for filing the reply in this matter. That's because only one week because they have been issuing notices to so, conduct the hearing. I'll make. I'll, 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 the officer has come personally, but the difficulty is that one lot since. Uh, uh, So settlement committee will be recently received the uh, reply of this uh, petition. Some more time is necessary. I'll, uh, It's just that the uh, uh, difficulty. What uh, other day, uh, senior advocate Mr. Suparkar had argued, and he said that it was uh, difficulties that now the one which is newly formed the, that also is going to be so no longer. They are protected. Interim protection. Oh, no, no, no. We are not pro pro because it says that uh, they are no. permitted to take the adjournment, and we are granting it. No, and we will point. grant it. That's not the point. Number one, my learned friend cannot and would not appear for the board. For that is for not there is a PS to be an holy alliance within the board, which is adjudicating authority and the assessing officer. 
I take it that he is not appearing for the board. I am appearing for the board. 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 So who is appearing for the office? Office of Mr. Rao. Okay. Some of the matters I have. Now, Mr. My apprehension is that board might dispute because Mr. Board has only task of getting the pending matters disposed of. New matters are not being taken. Well, it's not as if the new matters can be filed now only for the purpose of disposing of the pending matters which shifted from the settlement commission to the interim board are being considered by the board. So that might also not disappear any time. Not it's a pure question of law. There is no no finding of fact necessary. All right, you can just get the instructions whatever you need to. We'll keep it next week, to twenty third. If you need to, because as you're saying, you do not bother about the factual part of it. You address the court on the law. No, but then here he is just raising a question of law. He is saying whether what happened once you know this this entire change that has come. So and in what manner whether anybody would have uh, the power. What happened was what my instruction is that my lord in this this is a peculiar case. Look, there was when the settlement commission was in a force. The hearing took place uh, on the date of last hearing. The the then members have. Uh, Pronounce, not pronounce, or intimate, uh, inform the SSC that that this is how we. Correct, but that amounts to pronouncement, uh, isn't it? Not pronouncement. It was then, the order is not available. Order is required to, when there. Is, what I am told is that there is always a, always a time between the date of hearing, last hearing, and the date of order. Because once it is concluded, then the authority takes time in passing the order with the reasoned order. Because a grieved party has a right to go in. So now, do you want to say that there was no order? There was no order. In fact, that is the admitted position. There was no order, only hearing, and we are also agreeing to that part that there was only a pronouncement that this is how we are. Mr. Patel, Mr. Patel, what other day was argued before us is two things. It was pronounced, and one of the members also filed an affidavit. Oh, yes, that and, is and we are going to dispose of this matter. The order is never available. Do you have your papers? Uh, I have the matter. I will verify. Ask your officer. One of the officers has filed an affidavit saying that yes, we have pronounced, we have done this, we are unable to pass an order because one of the members is not available. After hearing, so after it's not after hearing, it's after pronouncement. You must realize it was date of the hearing, not date of pronouncement. Can you appreciate? That was the last. We do not know. Your 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 one of your members. No, please check that. Okay. Is your one of the members has filed a false affidavit? No, no. They have said that this is what we have intimated. That we are. This is how we are going to accept the settlement. It doesn't say that we have passed the order and it is pronounced. And that is why I call for the detail that what is the normal procedure. And I am orally told that there is always a gap between the last date of hearing and the order. If there is anything they want to hide because they have not passed the order, please don't do that. Certainly, it will, be, it will be very, very heavily coming upon them. I am the last person to even do that thing, so it's my duty to. Please don't do that the... because once anything today, if suppose from here we are telling about our having pronounced the order, we are saying we are allowing or we are not allowing it. That amounts to our pronouncement. If we have not been able to, then you know for some reason. Even dictate the order, or you have not done that. That's not the reason. For all parties concerned, it's a pronouncement of the order. We are duty bound. What we need to do, then it is for us as the judicial, you know, as a presiding officer. But then once it comes, it is finally. Unless, of course, there is a detailed procedure which says that after you having orally pronounced it, you will get this much of time. And in the meantime, even if you have passed the order and if you allowed it. But just because you don't get the time, this would amount to you can start it afresh. Just show us that rule. I will, Malod. That is why yeah. I need a more time. Malod, my request is thirty eight three zero because it's a, we need to dig up the earlier, Malod. Okay. Just uh, uh, file it by thirtieth. We'll take up the matter on thirtieth. Yes, please. Well, let them file it by twenty seventh or twenty eighth. So I'll try to. I'll okay. come up. I'll try to. All right. All right. Fine. Please, by twenty fifth. Fine. I'll try to. Uh, All, all the matters, all, all the, the three matter. from, all the four matters. Mr. Varun Patel, the Lanet Senior Standing Counsel, on instructions require time to file reply. Let the same be done on or before twenty fifth with a copy to the other side. Rejoinder, if any, should come by thirtieth. Matter shall be heard on thirty first. Please, so to be listed uh, after the fresh admission matters. Please. Thank you.
126 to 145. Office objections to be removed within a fortnight. If not, then without further reference to be dismissed. You know, may mention for two borrow circulation two matters. You know, this means that the notice has been made returnable, but meanwhile they have issued notice to 140 to 1 for completing because no blanket stay was granted or any type of stay was granted. Permitted. So the hearing is fixed on 19th. So for two hours, circulation for tomorrow, the urgency is despite the order of this court that uh, recovery proceedings would not be taken without a show cause notice. The authority has initiated process under section 79. My bank has been informed. The amount has been frozen. The next step would be to credit the amount to the authority. Permit. So this may seek the urgent circulation for tomorrow for one matter of refund that they are not issuing to me. Already, I'm mentioning for three matters I've filed. Uh, they are the special civil application of the GST Act. Now the thing is, my lady is already aware that there is a uh, section six. Uh, you want, I'm requesting for three urgent circulations for tomorrow. Take it my urgency is that kind my lady uh they have initiated illegal proceedings against me uh the state tax authorities mm -hmm. where my proceedings are already pending before the dggi mm -hmm. means the center of authorities now so they've initiated they are on they are on the worst uh issuing the state has issued it yes the state is uh that's why my urgency is that or now they are going to attach my property. They are going to attach my bank where the proceedings are already pending with the DGGI. I made them a letter that my all documents are with DGGI, even though they are not considering it. Right. 18th in that case. My lady, can I keep, uh, keep this matter on the top of the board? It will come wherever it is. 18th. Much obliged. Uh, uh, direct text matter on tomorrow. My OHV has been seized. I made an application on the session to be. Assessing authority has to decide my application within 120 days. It is already yes. uh, more than 670 days have been passed. Okay. Uh, that will be dispensed with. Okay. Lordship, I am requesting for urgent circulation of two direct text matters on tomorrow. Uh, type okay. copy note, please be dispensed with. We will ensure that all the copies are made. Obliged. Requesting for urgent circulation of five matters for tomorrow. 140. Four and one forty-eight time. One matter is that twenty percent amount is paid. Yes, recovery is available. Five copies may be dispensed. Yes, sir. <laughs> Well, in all these matters, notice has been issued to an entity which is no longer in existence. Please see the first matter 903. Subsequently, Maru, the Honorable Supreme Court has disagreed with Maru Suzuki and Maru uh, letters. Mm -hmm. Now, that judgment says that Maru the assessing uh, has to Maru inform the assessing officer mm -hmm. about the murder and without that, that Maru. Be, uh, so for the for the deceased also, the Supreme Court says that it's your your uh, responsibility as per the provision and also for merger. It is uh, something. So you you want to say that it is not they have not intimated. Uh, that is also like need to know. As I said, none of the matters. None of it is on record that we have informed them. Please see page number twenty three to twenty eight. Now, as I said, it's a limited. Uh, and please see, this has been January two uh, thousand twenty two. Yes, it's a one I, year. Anyway, if it is covered matter, then what is what is the reply that I, you want I to file? Not, uh, you can assist the court. So Gayatri Micron, they are relying on. Gayatri Micron and Maruti Suzuki. Yes, please point out where where have you intimated to the department of for this? Please see. Uh, page number 26. Is the letter of 20th March 2018 
whereas we are right now dealing with a notice of 148 of 29th march 21 sorry uh, the notice of 148 is of the 29th march 21 hmm. but back in 18 i had informed them regarding the merger please see at page number 26 on 20th march 2018 In the reply to the notice of 142.1, I have informed the assessing officer. It is required to companies, Kaizen and Kaizen Finstock. Yes. As per Gujarat, I got order dated 31st August. Yes. And certified copy of the scheme, etc. has been given. Malas, hmm. we will see that the authority is the same. The one on page number 26, the circle, circle 212. 212. And hmm. page number 23 is also circle 212. Oh, but it's, uh, the page number eight is the notice of 140. It is also by circle 21. That's my assessing officer. Hmm. So on 4th December 28, 2018. The assessment order of 1617 also passed under the right name. Therefore, the assessing officer full was fully aware about this merger. And notice of 148 cannot be issued against the old person. Where is the High Court's order? No, no, that is at page number 15. In fact, 9 onwards. Order of the High Court is of 5th August 2016. Yes. And you had intimated uh, the department on, on 20th March 2018. To the very same officer. Mm -hmm. Correct. The notice is dated 29th March 30th March 2021. Okay. Yes, Mr. Patel. So who will intimate? The company which is no longer there, how would it intimate? And this is in the context of some proceeding. That is what I am by my subject. Proceeding was 
No, so whatever it is. Sir. There was no specific intimation. So, in, in what manner would you require the intimation? So, where is the provision? Show, please show. Please show the show the provisions. No provision. As to amendment. Answer. Now, there is an amendment which uh, which uh, amendment in the section 170 and 171A, hmm. which says that uh, which proceedings are pending till the order is solved, it is valid. So, they have to, after the amalgamation, they have to communicate the order. Uh, but who will communicate? The new company. Correct. So, this is a new company which is already <laughs> intimated. So, in, in what? All right. So, what is the procedure to be? Tell us, therefore, we are saying that what is the procedure? Mm. They have followed with following letters so that now scheme has been sanctioned. Mm. We were using this part. Mm. Now, because of the sanctioned scheme, the company was with uh, some other company. Now, the assessment is to be made. So please read. Please read. Uh, this is this court has passed an order in 2016 yes, 20th march 2018 yes. to the very officer not to any other officer the circle 212 it's a very officer of ashram road which has been intimated this and and reply to the notice to under section 142 it has replied and it has said this is it also gave the high court's order which has been passed no, I'm not denying that. My no, point. fine. No, see, if you are wanting to take an objection saying that this is not a valid way of intimation, please show us. No problem. I must consider that there is no specific. As I said earlier, even Maruti Suzuki, this was also not permissible to argue. Everything was followed uh, to the shoulder of the assessing officer. That right? you must have that one no, if you if you feel that this is not the right way of intimation, we certainly can definitely can make it a point. We can tell them to intimate and we'll say this is not a valid way of intimation. Unless of course you point out to the court. This is the that this is not the way to intimate. And you may be right because the officer may be dealing with thousands of matters. So he's not expected to remember everything. So therefore if you have a format, look what in GST they have done. It's every order, every communication they've said that in this particular format that you need to do it. They also specify that if you need to through portal do it. If income tax act provides for that, you are fair enough to say that uh, this is not the way. This is the this. unless you you can just find out and if that is some. No, look. I mean, it's not. It's not. You, you may be right that it is to, to then link it to it, but then for that you need to have either a format, you need to have a provision, or you need to have a specific direction in that regard, then you will be right. Otherwise, it is an intimation. If you look at it, SSC would like to state that it has acquired two companies, yeah. Mrs. Kazan Stock Trade and Mrs. Kazan Finstock. As per Gujarat High Court order dated 31st August with record dated 1st April 15, order of Gujarat High Court and certified copy of the scheme is attached here with as Exhibit 1. So my, my submission is that, you know, that communication is required to be seen in the context of which it was given. It was not given as if that he is informing about the amalgamation so that the future steps can be taken against the Malot uh, resultant company. It is only in a context of some notice for which the SSC is responding during the course of the normal assessment. Uh, look, even if we we can uh, sympathetically look at your submission, we find that the company which is no longer existing, it has already amalgamated with the present petitioner. There will be no occasion for that company to intimate you that, look, we have been amalgamated. It is only the company which is now is getting amalgamated with the present petitioner will be intimating that these are the two companies which are amalgamated. Technical that how to communicate because many times they are also saying that since we uh, say that third company presently known as so and so, they take a view that it's in the name of old company. Same thing or if the old company says. You still either bring a, bring a change in the law one or you can uh, tell us 
as to what is an acceptable method which is or otherwise accepted in in every other communication because otherwise i'm quite sure that under the company laws Hmm. While the amalgamation takes place, it is mandatory to inform the income tax department, invite their objections, if any. In this case, please see at page number 20, the court notes that the objections of income department were invited and they did not file any objections. So even at the time of amalgamation itself, income tax department is put to notice that this amalgamation is taking place. And in, in no, that, amalgamation, no, that, that is fine. That, that you're right, that it is... Uh, page 20 the court has said that but then ultimately whether that has it is at a stage when they propose the amalgamation that the income tax department is being asked so, but sometimes they also find an objection that we don't want to correct this. but but at the same time whether the ultimately the court has accepted that or not and whether the amalgamation has been permitted or not is not something you know which the income tax department is not know. Yes. No, 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 no. But, but in this case specific to the same officer but to say that we will never know that's incorrect. But he, to a certain extent, he's right also that this is in reply to the section 142 notice that yes. you have you have intimated them, not that you have even in a truncated manner done it. You done it whatever was needed. But we, he's right that there has to be some way in which you know a specific directions or specific requirement the moment it goes. Like suppose uh, this is a 2016 order. You were issued the notice under section 142. Okay. Correct. But therefore, you intimated in 2018. If you know not had an occasion, they would never come to know about it. So there has to be some time period, time period that has to be either some format in which you know that needs to be intimated. So, so. But the Suzuki judgment does not even require the SSC to do so. The Suzuki judgment it's only on a law point hmm. is very clear that if the entity is no longer in existence. The notice cannot be issued. Magun reality. The facts are slightly different, but let me yes. Mm. For assessment year 2006 7, there was no intimation. Yes. And it was amalgamated uh, on 10 9 2007 with effect from 1 4 2006. But the Honorable Court tried to Malod, evaluate the distinction between the amalgamation and binding. The, 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 what seems to be weighed with the Honorable Supreme Court was that in amalgamation, it is going on and the new company assumes the liability. Therefore, that technical plea, though not expressly worded, but the technical plea is not available since till so long, Malod, he is representing that old company and the principles of basic research are complied with. On that count, probably the Honorable Supreme Court has in this particular judgment has decided. So, para uh, 16 onwards. The Honorable Supreme Court has said, first, the Honorable Court refers to section 170 in the income tax which is regarding subsidies. I must say that today there is an amendment in 2022. Even it is specifically provided till the order is communicated. The burden is cast upon the assessor. But does it does it say in what manner it has to be? No, no. It's a simple that once one order has been passed, the assessor he has to certified so copy. Here even order. even as per the uh, amendment also that has been done. But you have made a valid point. We're not saying that you not made a valid point. You're right that there has to be a separate way in which the officer concerned can take note of it. Now, in some proceedings, if they, they're telling about this, maybe, you know, it has escaped his, it's not his fault that it has escaped his uh, attention. But then there shall have to be some specific way, format in which they, they will need to be told. You can propose uh, I, to I the... Read that amended so that we'll let's talk. let's look at it. Just, uh, before I go to that section of the purpose, just the amalgamation thus is unlike the binding of the corporate entity. In the case of amalgamation, the outer shell of the corporate entity is undoubtedly destroyed. It ceases to exist. Yet every other sense of the term, the corporate venture continues and unfolded within this view or existing company. In other words, the business and adventures leave. But 
within the new corporate residence that is a transferring company it is therefore essential to look beyond the mere concept of destruction of a corporate entity which brings to an end or terminates any assessment proceedings there are analogies in civil law and procedure where upon amalgamation the cause of action or the complaint does not process it depending upon the court upon the structure and the objective of an action broadly the twist of the legal system and the court has been to locate if the successor or representative exists in relation to the particular cause of action upon whom the asset might have been devolved or upon whom the liability in event it is attributed well Number of para twenty one. It refers to the amalgamation definition, which was earlier not available. So what is ultimately? Please turn to page forty one. That's mm -hmm. what in light of the facts. Oh, para thirty one. Number of four times. Thirty one. Maruti Shukla Singh. Number forty one. Number of Supreme Court and the amalgamation definition saying that liability continues. In Maruti Suzuki. The scheme of the amalgamation was approved on so and so, and it was approved so and so. The same was intimated to the KO on so and so, and the notice under section so and so for the assessment was issued to amalgamating company on twenty six nine two thousand thirteen. This calling of uh, this calling of facts and circumstances of the following that were the observation has been made. There are thirty nine. Just first few lines. In the present case, despite the fact that the assessment officer was informed about the amalgamation. Amalgamated company has ceased to exist as a result of the approved scheme or also the legislation of the notice has been issued only in its name. And then there are thirty two. The court undoubtedly noticed Saraswati uh, noticed Saraswati syndicate. Further, the judgment in five zones of other line of the decision culminated in this court's order approving those judgments was also noticed. Yet the legislation change by law introduction of section two one amalgamation was not taken into account. Further, the tax treatment in the various provisions of the Act were not brought to the notice of this court in the previous decision. There is no doubt that MRPL amalgamated with Jhonpur so and ceased to exist, and thereafter, this is an established fact and not in uh, contention. The respondent has relied upon the decision of Jhonpur to contend that the notice issued in the name of amalgamating company is void and void. In fact, in the present case, how it can be distinguished? From the fact in so and so, first is in both case neither, and where it is in this way, no intimation in the present case. Rather, they participate in the assessment. This is how they. So that is the distinction. In Mahagund, they participated even with the changed name. In this case, very yeah. so. no. Both uh, they relied upon cases. The associate duly informed the authority about the merger. Of a company, yet the assessment order was passed in the name of Amal Company. So, in the company, how it is present here? For the solution, there was no intimation by the assessor regarding Amal Company of the company. The return of income for the assessor was filed by the assessor. The owner on so and so was in the name of MRPL. MRPL Amal Company with MIPL on so and so with the back on so and so. The present case, the proceedings against MRPL started in so and so when search and seizure was first conducted on the margin. Group of companies. Notice under Section One Hundred Thirty Three and Notice uh, and A and Section One Hundred Forty Three Two were issued in the name of MRPL and dispensary of MRPL corresponded with the department in the name of so and so. On so and so, the assessor filed return of income in the name of MRPL and the business fee organization in column uh, of the form mentioned not applicable in the amalgamation section. Though the respondent contended that they had intimated to authority by later date so and so. It was for the assessment of so-and-so, not for the assessment of so-and-so for the assessment. In addition, in the present case, the assessment here stated so-and-so mentioned the name of both the amalgamate and amalgamate. This is what it was. Second, the case relied on by the amalgamate. So, forty-one and forty-two and forty-three. If you look at it, the. Court says that everything would depend on each facts because it would depend on terms of amalgamation and the facts of the each case. So here also, if you look at it, they have undoubtedly intimated, 
and the court in uh, maruti suzuki also had found that assessing officer was intimated it does not say as to in what manner the intimation has to go and if uh, once there is an intimation in here incidentally it is to the very uh, circle yeah. it has been intimated yeah, so one was in maruti suzuki the maruti mm. assessment order was passed and that was on a challenge mm. after maruti uh, tribunal was called back. correct and there the distinction is that maruti the order was called as uh, uh, plus question that after issuance of procedure then the 143 or 147 mm. if the assessee intimates mm. can the assessment order still be passed in the name of the mm. old company that seems to be the but in in in, order, in uh, any case I mean, whatever the facts would differ in uh, almost everywhere, but at the same time, if you'd been intimated well in time, yes. the amalgam once there there is an amalgamation that earlier company is not existing. It's a kind even in this uh, decision of Mahakun Realtor, yes. the court has uh, used the word is um, it's it's a corporate death of a company. of the one which has been uh, amalgamated yes, it is also so this is an amalgamated company hmm? that is a that is a change in amalgamation definition which was not earlier has also been considered and that is a basis for distinguishing the judgment of maruti suzuki okay tera pati hmm the court maruti suzuki Further, the judgment of Spy Souls on the line of decision, culminating on the culminating in this court's order, that is, Madhu Maruti Souls, approving those judgments, were also noticed. Yet, the method to be changed by of introduction of Section Souls, so refining the Maruti Souls was not taken into account. Hmm. And further, the tax treatment in of various provisions of the Act were not brought to the notice of this court in a previous decision. This was clearly distinguished. And what has been made with the honorable court is the intention of the amalgam. It is not like the death of a person where it cannot be mother uh, said that if the business has continued, only the nomenclature has been changed. So you would, you would say that of, even after amalgamation, you would you would still continue to give the notice to the earlier uh, entity. The time alone is a procedural defect. That is why my point is that if <laughs> they can point out that this is what the, it will not be able to initiate the entire procedure. The, the you cannot give the notice to the others. Uh, you maybe you know your right to uh, issue the notice uh, to the unless you can point out from the amalgamation. As to what are those uh, liabilities and all that that you'd already been sent. The matter of the my subpoena dispatch will perform of notices to make them aware that these are the points on which we would like to make the assessment, and you may respond to those ad uh, proposed additions or proposed grounds. If that has been matter of the uh, availed by the assessor, but this technical ground on which the entire process is cannot be carried out by the subpoena. It's, it's not technical ground. It's a legal ground. The technicality and the legality we both have a different. I think that that there I read about the motion just by which is in a slightly different context than the para eighteen of that. Then we'll have amendment maybe see. Let's look at it. That's right. Can you please give any context? Here? When has it been brought? Uh, 2022. 2007. Which provision you want us to see? One seventy. One seven. Zero. This is from one four two thousand twenty. The financial department. Subsection two, capital A, has been added. Hmm, not with not with sending anything contained in subsection so and so, where there is a succession, assessment, reassessment, or any other proceeding made or initiated on the present day during the course of pendency of such succession, shall be deemed to have been made or initiated on succession, and all the provisions of so and so so far as applied to the accord. And my lord, pendency has been defined. Explanation for the purpose of this section, the term pendency means the period commencing from the date of filing of application of such succession or business, of business before the high court or tribunal, or the date of admission of application for corporate insolvency resolution by the adjudicating authority, as defined in clause so and so of the insolvency so and so, and 
ending with the date on which the order of such high court or tribunal or activity in authority as the case may be is received by the principal commissioner of order now till the date they formally inform the principal commissioner with the order that this is what has happened this is uh, which is the assess which is the assessment here yeah the assessment here is of uh, different assessment here in different marks no no the one which is impugned here 1617 1617 right yes Wait, what is the date of notice 21 21 where well, you've been intimated in which year 18 so during the succession you write you write that in in uh, uh, this uh, decision the supreme court has said but then they've taken note of because while deciding the uh, maruti suzuki that change of an introduction of 2a in section 170 was not taken care of the court says you cannot be oblivious of that and therefore need to actually so therefore the magun is of course uh, uh, emphasizing on the change the uh, legislature has realized that this is a way of escaping the you know that, within. That is with regard to uh, to amalgamation that change is with regard to definition of amalgamation which was brought in the statute earlier there was no definition mm. which was uh the honorable court voted that ignored by the earlier time correct the, correct the, so the, the idea seems to be that the mm. amalgamation says that the continuity of liability and continuity of assets and if that is the case, it says, it like says, no, please read it again. Please read it. It says during the succession, during this proceeding, it's a, when the, there is a pendency from the date you made an application till it is adjudicated and finalized. Till that, if anything that is happening, you cannot say that it is already reached to a stage. That is what the court has said. And if, you, if you read it, you don't need to even look at the interpretation. If the section 2A itself is not standing anything contained in subsection 1 and 2, where there is success in the assessment or reassessment or any other proceedings made or initiated on the predecessor during the course of pendency of such succession shall be deemed to have been made. Mm. This judgment refers to section 2 on capital A of the company's act and not one of these two way But even if if you, if you look at it, your provision, the later decision, if you look at it, uh, sorry, the later provision, if you look at it, you, assuming that they are covered by this, you can't go beyond this, can you? This is what your 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 this reason. Is, by, by even even if you are if you are not. There is a mechanism, uh, not specific form, but now there is a provision which says that you are free after the amalgamation. Anyway, we wanted to whatever is not done against the old company is deemed to be a valid action. Petitioner is uh, before this court under Article 226 of the Constitution of India challenging the notice issued by Respondent Number 1 under Section 148 of the Income Tax Act, dated 30th March 2021, directing the petitioner to furnish the return of income for the assessment year 1617 on the ground that this is a notice issued without jurisdiction and is illegal as it is a notice to the non-existing person. The brief facts leading to the present petition are as follows. The petitioner is a paragraph. The petitioner is a limited company. 
the two companies, namely Kaizen Stock Trade Private Limited and Kaizen Finstock Private Limited, were amalgamated into the petitioner company by an order dated 5th August 2016 in company petition 235 of 2016. in company application 221 of 2016. The court's uh, sanction to a scheme of amalgamation of the two transferer companies, namely Kazan Stock Trade Private Limited and Kazan Fine Stock private limited with the present petitioner Coorgy Finstock FinCorp private limited was proposed under section 391 and 394 of the companies act The notice of petitions had been served upon the Office of Official Liquidator for the transferer company. It had been also served upon the central government and affidavit also had been filed by the regional director, Northwest Region, Ministry of Corporate Affairs. The court also considered the observations of the regional director that it had uh, sent to the income tax department, it had invited the income tax department for raising the objections No reply had been received from the department within the statutory period envisaged as per the circular of Ministry of Corporate Affairs for the transfer company. And therefore, it was presumed that the department had no objection to the proposed scheme of arrangements. However, The department had sought that the transferee company would mandatorily comply with all conditions laid down by subsection 2 to 5 of section 72 capital A and subsection 19 into bracket double A of section 2 into bracket 1 capital B bracket over of the act. Taking note of the fact that the petitioner companies agreed to comply with the applicable provisions of the Income Tax Act and the rules, and considering the overall facts and circumstances, coupled with all the documents presented before this court, this court concluded that the scheme of amalgamation put forth before it is in the interest of the shareholders and creditors as well as in the public interest is accordingly deserving the sanction. Therefore,
had allowed the petition, petitions, all the petitions with the following operative order. You can uh, take it. Uh, There are 10 rumors. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Very good. In a written file by the petitioner for the assessment year 16-17, the fact of amalgamation was indicated. This case was picked up for reassessment and notice under section 142.1 was issued on 22nd March 18. The petitioner replied to the same on 20th March 2018 and on 4th December 2018, the order of assessment under section 143.3, where you can see the scrutiny assessment was completed, considering the income of the petitioner and those two companies which have been merged with the petitioner. Paragraph, the notice under section 148 is issued by were issued on 30th March 21 in the name of the predecessor company, namely Kazan Finstock Private Limited, seeking to reopen the assessment for assessment year 1617. Separate through email dated 28th April 21, the response number one was apprised of the factum of amalgamation and pointing out that the notice is bad as ab initio. However, no response has been given and hence the petitioner has approached this court seeking following reliefs para seven. Paragraph we this court issued the notice on 24th January 2022. The following, um, no, yes, on 24th, I have following order. Quorum Justice Padewala, as his Lordship then was, and Justice Nisha Thakur. Paragraph, learned uh, senior standing counsel, Mr. Varun Patel, uh, appeared in response to the notice for final disposal. And this court has heard the learned advocate, Mr. Bandish Suparkar, as well as learned <coughs> counsel, Mr. Patel. It is pointed out uh, to this court that uh, order of uh, 5th August 2016 had been intimated to the Officer at on 20th March 2018, in reply to the notice under section 142.1 of the IT Act for the assessment year 1617, while replying to the notice, there has been a specific uh, government in the first para itself, addressed to circle two into bracket one into bracket two. That the company's case is stock trade private limited into bracket pan number. You can just write down from P26. 
and Kaz and Finstock Private Limited Pan. Just write the pen number of both of them. As per the decision of this court on 31st August 2016, with the record date of 1st April 2015, have been acquired by the present petitioner. Paragraph. We he has urged that this should be construed as sufficient intimation, and yet the notice has been issued, which is impugned in this petition on 30th March 2021 for the assessment year of 1617 for Kazan Finstock Private Limited, which no longer exists. The amalgamating company having ceased to exist as a result of the approved scheme, it is urged that no notice could be issued on it, relying on the two decision. Of uh, Gayatri Micron versus Assistant Commissioner 424 ITR page 288 into bracket Gujarat and Maruti Suzuki India, CIT principal CIT versus Maruti Suzuki India, 416 ITR 613 into bracket Supreme Court. Paragraph Planet Council Mr. Patel has urged that the Maruti Suzuki decision also has been considered by the Apex Court in case of a Principal Commissioner of Income Tax versus Mahagun Realtor, Private Limited, 443 ITR, page 194 into bracket Supreme Court. And therefore, the court shall need to consider this decision, which though speaks of the outer shell of the corporate entity to have been destroyed. In the other sense of term, the corporate venture continues and folded within the new and existing transfer entity. Therefore, it is urged that uh, it is essential to look beyond the mere concept of this destruction of the corporate entity. He also further has pointed out that the manner of intimation also should have been different because to the decision as well as the change which has been brought subsequently, of course, inserted by Finance Act 2022 with effect from 1st April 22. that it is the responsibility of <clears throat> not pointed out, you just said this much. Hmm? Noticing thus the submissions of both the sites and the material on the record. It is not to be, it, it is not requiring much of a debate that in the instant case, this court on 5, 5th August 2016, after following the requisite the procedure and which also includes giving of notice to the income tax department has chosen to 
decide the plea of amalgamation and approve the scheme of amalgamation in the interest of the shareholders, creditor, and also has taken note of the public interest. This decision had been intimated by the present petitioner in a reply to the notice under section 142.1 of the Income Tax Act for the assessment year 16-17. Not only it had uh, specified that it has acquired the two companies, Kazan Stock, Pri Stock Trade Private Limited with PAN number and Kazan Finstock Private Limited. Then you can write that with PAN number. This is, uh, and, and, and this uh, communication address to Circle 212 um, provides for an order of the court dated 31st August 2016. Paragraph in absence of any particular format for intimating the authority concern, this intimation on the part of the petitioner is uh, sufficient to is a sufficient intimation to the department we need to also make a note of the fact that the notice which is impugned in the present petition is also issued by the very officer circle 212 whom the intimation had been given by the petitioner This court in, um, sorry, the Apex court in case of uh, CIT versus Maruti Suzuki. Super. Had noted that the assessing officer was informed of the amalgamating company having ceased to exist as a result of the approved scheme of amalgamation. Court held that the legal principle is that the amalgamating entity ceases to exist upon the approved scheme of amalgamation. This also relied on the decision of the spice infotainment. Versus CIT 2012 280 ALT page 43 into bracket Delhi. Sorry. Uh, mm. Hmm. This court in case of uh, Gayatri Micron Limited versus Assistant Commissioner of Income Tax was considering the case of issuance of notice under Section 148 to one of the three transfer companies for reopening the assessment for the assessment full stop. The court considered whether the transferer company had ceased to exist as a result of approved scheme of amalgamation. Answering that in affirmation, it held that in such case, the notice issued under section 148 in its name would be fundamentally illegal and without jurisdiction.
पेपर है एट नाइन एंड टेन पैराग्राफ द सुप्रीम कोर्ट इन केस ऑफ प्रिंसिपल कमिश्नर वर्सेस मागुन रियल्टर कंसिडर दैट इन द was consider consider the case where for the assessment year 67 where there was no intimation by the sec regarding the amalgamation of the company the return of income uh, was filed by the sec in the name of mrpl and mrpl amalgamated with mipl on 11 5 2007 filed by the sec on 30th june 2006 in the name of mrpl mrpl amalgamated with mipl on 11th may 2000 2007 with effect from 1st april 2006 the proceedings against mrpl started in 27th august 2008 when search and seizure was first conducted on ssc group of companies The notice under Section One Fifty Three, Capital A, in Section One Forty Three, into Bracket Two, were issued in the name of MRPL, and the representatives from MRPL corresponded with the revenue in the name of MRPL. SSC filed its return of income in the case of MRPL in two thousand ten, in May two thousand ten, and in the business record reorganization column of the form mentioned. It it mentioned not applicable in amalgamation section. It had contended that the intimation was sent to the revenue on twenty second July two thousand ten. The same was for assessment year seven eight and not for assessment year six seven. The separate proceedings under section one fifty three capital A were initiated against MIPL. For assessment years two thousand seven eight to eight nine, and the proceedings against MRPL for those two assessment years were quashed by the commissioner, as the amalgamation was disclosed. Sir, Pera, since the amalgamation was known to the SSC even at the stage when the search and seizure operations had taken place, and the statements. were recorded by the revenue of the director and managing director of the group the return was filed pursuant to the notice which also suppressed the factum of amalgamation on the contrary the return was filed by the mrpl the company which it ceased to exist and yet the appeals were filed on behalf of it before the commissioner and a cross appeal by the before the tribunal the affidavit before the court also was on behalf of the director of mrpl and the assessment proceedings assessment order had attributed the specific amount surrendered by mrpl and after considering the special auditor's report and that too after considering the special auditor's report bringing specific amount to tax in the search assessment order all this according to the court indicated that the order the apex court indicated that the order adopted a particular method of expressing the tax liability and it opined that the conduct of the sec commencing from the date the search took place and before all forums reflected that it consistently held itself out as the sec it was held that it was held whether the corporate death of an entity upon amalgamation per se invalidates an assessment order ordinarily cannot be determined on a bare application of section 481 of the companies act but would depend on the terms of amalgamations and the facts of each case 
in light of this the order of the high court was not sustained and as the appeal of the revenue against the order of commissioner was not heard on merit the court had restored the matter to the file of the tribunal while so holding the court uh, had taken note of the decision of the maruti suzuki to hold us para 31 32 33 it is to be noticed that that the court specifically had held that the mrpl amalgamated with mipl and cease to exist thereafter the contention of the respondent that the notice issued in the name of amalgamating company being void and illegal relying on spice and the maruti suzuki supra was not sustained only on the robust facts which had been presented before the court holding that can be distinguished from the facts existed in those matters according to the court the facts applicable to the present case are those which existed in case of the maruti suzuki and not as were before the apex court in magun realtor into bracket private limited bracket supra here of course the intimation is given in a reply to the notice under section 142 in the month of march 2018 by specifically intimating to the concerned officer of the factum of amalgamation by the petitioner of its having acquired both the companies kaizen stock trade and kaizen finstock private limited it is the very officer who after 3 years of such intimation has issued the notice which is impugned in the name of the company which no longer exist on 30th march 2021 for the assessment year 1617 therefore the grievance on the part of the petitioner requires to be sustained and the action of the respondent authority warrants interference in a, a separately you know where mr patel has argued you can also add that for the purpose of uh, explaining as to how the insertion of the provision section subsection 2a of section 170 has also permitted the assessment or reassessment or any other proceedings where there is a succession during the course of pendency of such succession is brought to our notice 
by the learned counsel. However, this also, the, the however, he has barely said that this will not be applicable in case of the pre present petitioner, but this also does not in any manner specify the manner of intimation to the authority concern. There is no format given, nor is it been specified as to within what time the intimation needs to be given. But the other and in the instant case, it's almost after two years, such an intimation has been given. And the assessment also had taken place in case of the present petitioner, taking into consideration the amalgamation that had been permitted. We do take into we, we do take a note of the fact that the income tax department had been uh, issued the notice by this court at the time of considering the request for approving the scheme of amalgamation. But at the same time, that would in no manner absolve any party not to intimate the final order of amalgamation, which is otherwise ex expected under the law. The statute not giving any format, nor is the board having specified any format. This intimation in response to the notice under section 142 should be construed as a sufficient compliance and hence this petition deserves to be allowed. Yes, give us the content matter. Are there any facts differing? I don't think Does the assessment years change? Years, years will change. Here, yeah, the assessment year different. The draft, 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 What is the year of assessment? Well, serial number 66 is uh, triple one zero. Yes, 1617. 1617. Uh, then uh, double one, double one. Double one, double one is 1314. Mm. Double one, double one, 1314. Double one, one three is 1415. Only minus the, the serial number one was. Kaisa Kumarji Fincock, which was earlier Kaisa and Finstock, whereas 66, 67, 68 are which were earlier Kaisa and Stock Trade. There were two transferer companies. These three are for the other transferer company. But facts are identical otherwise. You can uh, just in the first pair assess it all the group of uh, the group of matters are being decided by a common order as they all involve identical question of law and facts are largely similar. The facts are drawn for the purpose of adjudication from special CA 903. 903, right? The one predicted it, right? In fact, the other three matters of the same are coming tomorrow as well. Other, other three? 
So, because there are in total seven matters of this kind. Today there are four matters which are. All right. We'll say in matters. light of the other these four. I can. I can give the number of. Let me tell you tomorrow. Notice for final disposal, what is it? Right. There are a couple of uh, fresh matters today uh, where I think uh, 148 notices uh, are there. Mr. Yogesha, Nitin Mehta, Nitin Mehta, Yogesha. Then I think those are the matters, right? So these are all, I think, uh, all 13, 14, 14, 15, 15, 16, 17, 148. We'll be issuing the notices. In, sir. Yes. Yes. Who's appearing uh, in this case? Not in this Not matter. Sure. Not in this matter. Uh, there is a violation of the principles of natural justice. The, uh, the facts of the case are this wise. So course notice under section 148 capital A close B was issued on 20th March 2022, asking me to file reply by 27th of March 2022. My lords would find this so course notice on page number 15. Hmm. In response to this uh, uh, this SOCOS notice, I have sought an adjournment on 27th of March 2022 for a period of 15 days, that is up to 11th of April 2022. No reply was received from the respondent till 4th of April 2022, that is till 8th day of my request of adjournment, no reply was received by me. And therefore, I am under a bona fide belief that, that my uh, request for 15 days of adjournment has been granted. Not suddenly on 5th of April uh, 2022 on uh, 6.44 p.m. Uh, email was received from the respondent stating that you need to file your response by 6th of April 2022 1.30 p.m. giving me only few working hours to make my submission. Against that I have already sought an adjournment another uh, another adjournment on 6th of April 2022 stating that sir kindly grant me at least three working days to make my submission and the reason uh, for giving him uh, the reason on the basis of which he has you had sought time up to 11th April 11th April yes my lord my lord would find uh, my uh, request for the adjournment on page number 19 NXR E this was never replied to Sorry, it was not replied. It was not replied. On 4th of April, I received an email stating that you need to file your response by 1.30 p.m. of 6th April. And therefore, only a few working hours has been allowed to me to make my submission. The reason on the basis of which the respondent has given me these few working hours to make my submission is that the matter is getting time barred. On 6th of April 2022, I uh, sort an ad another adjournment stating clearly that sir time barred when the matter be, the matter is not getting time barred actually as per the new provisions of section 149 capital uh, 149 uh, subsection 1 hmm. the time allowed me in the SOCOS notice as well as the extended type uh, allowed to me would be excluded from the uh, computation of the period of limitation my lords would find section 149 on uh, in on uh, in the income tax act on page number one point one double zero three. Yes, married time limit section one forty nine subsection one. That is uh, for the time limit for issuance of notice under section one forty eight. No notice under section 148 shall be issued for the relevant assessment year if three years have elapsed from the end of the relevant assessment year unless the case falls under clause B. My case is falling under clause A. So there, uh, so there is a uh, time period of three years. Now, Lord, 
my lords would uh, go to a third proviso of section 149.1 on page on the next page 1.1004. Which year we are talking? We are dealing with assessment in 1819. Hmm. I've also prepared a brief note. Competing period of limitation, my lord. Look, I mean that issue we are already considering right now. You are on to what? We have already issued the notice, protected you. Yes, my lord. Is it on the ground of non-availability of the principle of uh, natural? Is I want to go back to the assessing because officer. This, this aspect. Why are you taking us to this? That this being the time limit uh, for notice. No, because uh, my objections have not been considered. Actually, in yeah. response to so-called notice, I have to raise my objections. Already, mm. order disposing of objections. He has to pass order disposing of my objections. He has not considered my objections. I have not been. I have been depri uh, uh, deprived. From raising my objections, my lord, and that is why I am before this honourable court. The date of notice is twenty uh, second April. No, no, not date of notice is twentieth March. So called notice twentieth March, two thousand nineteen. Sorry, twenty twenty. Twenty twenty two, twentieth March, twenty twenty two. Can I make my submission on this uh, note for competition of period of limitation? Mm -hmm. My lords, uh, have this. Yes, we yes, have yes. Uh, but the three years from the end of the relevant assessment eighteen nineteen is expiring on thirty first of March, two thousand and nineteen. Hmm. In the so-called notice, seven days have been allowed to me, so that will be added to the period of limitation. I have sought an adjournment of fifteen days on twenty-eighth of March, and if we add these fifteen days to this uh, period of limitation, then total aggregate twenty-two days will be added to the period of limitation. And the limitation for the purpose of issuing notice under section one forty-eight, and for the purpose of uh, passing of order under section one forty-eight, capital A close due would expire on twenty-second of April, twenty twenty-two. And therefore, he has enough time. If he has allowed me full fifteen days, he is to pass the order disposing of the objections uh, by twenty second of April, twenty twenty two. But he was under a, some. He is misconceived actually that the period for passing the order is getting time barred, and therefore you need to file your response. Anyway, your present uh, grievances in respect of your not your request not having been responded to, right? Well, within time. And you've been given very short time. So, so. Miller, the allegation that I've been given time for around one day, one day time to respond is just bias. So, page fifteen in the showcase notice under one forty. Hmm. Page fifteen. Hmm. Para three. He is called upon to file sir. Uh, Reply on or before twenty seventh of March two thousand twenty two. Therefore, minimum seven days has been granted. Page nineteen. This is application dated twenty seventh of March two thousand twenty two. Requesting for further fifteen days. And this is the reason. Now objections to the show cause notice issue number one forty is under preparation. My tax consultant is also busy in written filings. Income tax assessment, which is getting time bar, therefore I seek an adjournment at least fifteen days. Hmm. So this is twenty-one. This this request he has made on which date? Twenty-seventh March two thousand twenty. Hmm. The last date for filing the tax. Then what? Page happened? twenty-one. Hmm. Is the response of the assessing officer to such adjournment request? Is dated fifth of April two thousand twenty. Hmm. Reads with reference to your reply dated twenty seventh March twenty twenty two. With respect to show cause notice dated twentieth March twenty two. The hearing was granted time till one thirty pm on six four two thousand twenty two. Okay, when if you have given it, don't say no. Seven days you have granted. Is there when there is no specified time period given? If you say that this uh, seven days was sufficient enough for him to reply, yeah, granting time to six April. So Correct, the but the, it is seventeen days time which has been granted. That's not a point, Mr. Karan. We've been telling 
today, suppose you coming before this court, you've been granted the time for filing your reply till today. Then you make a request that please allow us the further time. We don't tell you yes or no. We don't say anything. And then just a day before, you say, all right, you're given three days or you're given two days or three hours. That's not how it works. So, so if on 27th March, when he made a request, you either say we are rejecting your request. You'll be construed to have said whatever you needed to. Or you say, yes, we are allowing it you up to 6th. How do you say just the, a few hours before the 6th is expiring or 7th? How many days you granted? A day. A day. Okay. Why? But then if you compute from the initial notice, 17 days has been what did he? What was his request? He's expected to be the... He said, grant me time up to 11th. Yes, he said 15 days. My he said 15 days, grant me time. So if you would have granted 15 days and if you would have not been ready, you can understand. You're saying we are giving you one day, one day time. In Tibet on time, we're not saying you don't do it. Even if you reject it, we don't mind. It's a seven days is sufficient. But there has to be a method. That is what, 20, uh, page 21 is the only communication. <laughs> Why can't it be either auto generated? Why can't it be, you know, some way you can intimate to the officer concern, to the SSC concern? In this case, it is fit for better. I don't know if from the fact that it is, you know, days. But if you, if you compute from the initial basis, we're not saying no. Days Today you're coming, you're asking the court, sir, grant us two weeks' time. We don't reply anything. Nothing. <laughs> you would come after two weeks and say, sir, we had construed since there was no order, but you would not even rejected our own request. So we have construed and here is our reply. Can we say that you were wrong to so that? Now suppose on the 11th day we said, do it on the 12th day. How do you, how do you expect that to happen? The SSC could have filed something, even partial submissions to see tight over the matter. What prevents you from intimating the person concerned? If we start adopting the same method as what is what the income tax department is doing, would you be happy with that? Would you have no cause of concern or complaint? This is one. Answer the very day on which, or maybe just a day here and there, or either allow it, disallow it. But to say that we grant you a day's time is something, you know, which is. And what did he say? He said, allow us up to 11. You, were you agreeable to him? Mm -hmm. After it appears on page 22, mm -hmm. on 6th of April, <clears throat> he says, please grant us three days time. Correct. So you wanted to have the time up to 11th. And then he said, all right, allow me just three days. So why did you not grant those three days time? It appears that the agenda was uploaded. Was it time barring assessment? Uh, the time was granted till 1.30 p.m. on 6th for 2022. Page 22. The screenshot is at page 24. The adjournment details. It appears that he has approved on 4.42. Maybe the total most likely. Page 22. Put yourself in this condition and, and just think that the court has asked you to so do it. It's not the method that. Huh? 
Special Civil Application 7229 of 2022. This is a petition under Section 226 of the Constitution of India, seeking to question the action of the respondent authority. in the following factual background. The petition of file paragraph, it's his original return of income for the assessment year 1819 on 5th October 2018. Sapera, the show cause notice under section 148 capital A into bracket B of the act was issued on 20th to zero, March 2022, asking the petitioner to submit the response on or before 27th March, 2022. First off, petitioners sought 15 days time to file objections explaining the reason for such an adjournment on 27th March, 22. According to the petitioner, His objection to the Shoko's notice are under preparation and his tax consultant is extremely busy in written filing and the income tax assessment for the income tax assessment, which we're getting time barred on 31st March 22. He therefore sought adjournment of at least 15 days to file the objections to the notice issued under section 148, capital A. This was never replied to. And an email was received from the respondent on 5th April 2022 at 6.44 p.m. Granting time till 1.30 p.m. on 6th April 22. Stating the reason that the matter is time barring. Paragraph on 6th April 22, the petitioner requested an adjournment of at least three days, stating that the objections were under preparations and the details were being collected from previous consultant as well as the concerned parties. Therefore, it was urged that at least three days time up to 9th March be given, 9th April 22 be given when they will be filing their objections. It is further pointed out to the officer that the matter is not time barring and allowing the adjournment for three days would not in any manner prejudice the interest of revenue. The petitioner expresses inability to submit request for adjournment on the tab because of the error that the said letter was not having the due date. The screenshot also was attached along with such request. However, the respondent had not paid any heat and Therefore, the petition is before this court seeking to challenge. When was the order passed? Uh, an extra order came to be passed under Section 148, capital A into bracket D under on 6th April 22 itself. An extra. Notice has been issued or it's just an order which has been passed? It has, both, both. Both. It has been issued on the same day. The notice also has been under section 148 is issued on the very day for this material 1819. Paragraph we've heard the learned advocate 
on both the sides and also have perished the material on the record. This is a clear case of a breach of principle of natural justice. It is not acceptable when the respondent argues that the time, initial time of seven days was granted from 20th March to 27th March. It is also unpalatable that on 27th March, though the revenue chose not to reply to the request of grant of 15 days, comma, it suddenly on 5th April 2022 chooses to grant the time of 24 hours and insist on the reply of the petitioner to be filed. There was a specific request made of 15 days on the ground that the tax consultant was busy in time barring assessment proceedings. The revenue chose not to reply to the same on 27th March 2022. It never replied to the petitioner for it to know whether there has been any note the positive note to its request for adjournment and all of a sudden on 5th april 22 it chooses to direct the petitioner to file its reply on or before 6th april when it was not a case of time barring assessment nor was there any urgency for it to not even exit to the request of for the three days for the petitioner to file its reply. This approach is not at all conducive for the adjudicating authority, which is acting as, which, which is adjudicating uh, the cause and which is also dealing with the finance of the people. The list uh, the officer could have done was to grant three days time, which was requested for by the petitioner on the 6th April 22, showing his inability and also pointing out that it was not a time barring assessment. This surely warrants interference. Calculating the days from 20th March 2022 also will not suffice. This court, in case of Gandhi reality, has in detail dealt with this uh, issue to hold that there has to be sufficient amount of opportunity to be given to the court. To choose not to reply and respond to the request and to then spring a surprise any time in between is something which this court totally and completely disapproves while acting as a cautious judicial authority it is expected to follow the principles which are very well established and one of them is giving opportunity to the parties and to follow the procedure in accordance with law. The day on which the request is made either needs approval or rejection. However, once having kept silence and many days to have passed coma, it cannot suddenly chooses to insist on answering within 24 hours as the other side would also not be wrong in presuming that such a request is already exceeded to and therefore by 11th it was required to file the reply had this a case where it could have asked for the time beyond 11th or it would not have been ready by 11th april the revenue would the revenue could always con contend that the time as per 
the request of the petitioner was available and yet it was not ready with the answer. In such an eventuality, the court could have noted the circumstances differently, which is not the case here. Therefore, this needs to be construed and held to be. The process which is in violation of the principle of natural justice and hence the order of assessment deserves to be caused by warranting interference at the ends of the court. Needless to say that the process needs to be initiated from the stage where it has been left. Let the opportunity of filing the reply be given of two weeks from the date when the intimation is given to them. Objections have already been filed. It's been filed. It has already been filed. All right. You need to the hearing need a hearing one huh. personal person okay. hearing. A opportunity of person hearing should be granted so on intimate. Mean by filing objection is not on record. Anyway, you can, you can always give an opportunity and better to be disposed of in accordance with law. So, the order of assessment is 148 in the order. Okay. Notice is 148 in the order. In consequence, 148 notice. The notice uh, will continue to be there. You will be given an opportunity, whatever the opportunity. Actually, 148 AD order is to be passed, deciding whether it is a fit case for issuance of notice. Correct. So, it's the stage where they have. Denied you the opportunity, it will start from there. My lord, mm -hmm. but at this stage, uh, 148 notice will also go, my lord, because 148 AD order, in that order, the authority will decide whether it is a fit case for instance of notice under 148 or yes. not. There you're right. So, earlier notice will continue. Mm -hmm. The notice will continue, the AB notice. 148 AB notice. Mm -hmm. Oblige. Now, as here is a case where due to some portal glitch, I could not respond to the notice. So you could not have benefit to go through the draft, draft assessment order? Yes. Uh, it had been given, but then... Not really. Please see. My case is... Who is appearing in this case? There was a notice already issued. This notice is served, but no one appears. 2nd August 2022, the notice had been made returnable by Justice Padivala's bench. What has happened? You would be appearing? Why are you clueless? They have not instructed you. When I access the portal, it showed no notice. Later on, the notice has appeared. There is a portal glitch happening, which is known fact that the, there are various courts also taking the notice of the glitches in the portal. Uh, Bombay, Calcutta, Madras. There could be Madras High Court and the Calcutta High Court decision on the mm. file. I only want to go back to get the opportunity to respond to the notices. Page number 58 is my letter to them saying that I have not received these notices that you see and on, on this portal I have also attached a screenshot of the portal to say that on the portal I don't see any notices. 58 to 60 is my letter to them. Probably page number 60 would be the screenshot of the portal. 
And when the assessment order is passed, at that time portal shows. I'm not saying that to the effort. later on the portal magically shows all the notices, but at that time there was no notice shown. And this is problem faced by a lot of assessees throughout the country during the June to September 21. And they were migrating from one portal to another. June to September. 21? Yes. Mr. Patel, you would like to? Uh, any? Sure, sure. Sir? We are sending it back only. So to them, we're not we're not wanting to uh, say anything. It's just a uh, till next week. Special CA seven six six one of twenty two. Mr. Varun Patel needs to take instructions in relation to the draft assessment orders sent to the petitioner not being available for the petitioner to peruse due to technical glitch. Uh, this court, at the time of issuance of notice on 19th April 22, has issued the notice uh, by specifying these details. Shall be, this shall be heard on 23rd January. Uh, to be listed in first ten matters. Published minutes. Sure. The court should grant me leave to amend there are two identical matters. Because if the amendment is accepted, matter will automatically fail. Front copy. One copy is not ready. One copy is missing. Marie. Perimeter may be given too much. But I am challenging reopening for assessment year. 15, 16, and 16, 17. But inter alia, now on the ground, that the sanction to issue notice under section 148 is granted hmm. by DGIT or principal commissioner when the law requires it to be granted by the superior authority. On that short ground, it will fail. Please see, my lord, 9909. My lords have in hand. Kindly go to page 18. Last line may kindly be seen. This is while approving reopening under section 148AB clause D. This order is passed. With the prior approval of the DGIT investigation, my Lord's paper. So, also please see page 20 while issuing notice under section 148. The assessing officer says this notice is being issued after obtaining prior approval of the PCIT. But I don't know why, how DGIT became PCIT, but let us take it it is PCIT DGIT. Page 20. Now, kindly go to the provision below, section 151, yes, uh, specific, uh, page 1005 bottom. Mm. Specified authority for the purposes of section 148 and 148A shall be 
principal commissioner principal director or commissioner or director if three years or less than three years have elapsed from the end of the relevant assessment years in this case well in the first case five years have elapsed in the second case six years have elapsed or two principal chief commissioner or principal director general or whether there is no principal chief commissioner or principal director general the chief commissioner or director general if more than 3 years have elapsed from the end of the relevant assessment year so it has to be the draft amendment are we allowing uh, you have any objection to this that can be allowed but you can argue subject to of course your contention because uh, allowing it uh, without that would amount to our also deciding uh, something you know which we are still uh, no, no, I'm sorry. It's only after I receive notice under section 148, I'll come to know. This is the last stage before I came to your lordship. 148 AB clause D is the order disposing of my objection and followed by 148 order. At which state do I know? Unless I the sanction will always come afterwards. Unless I know in advance that this is the sanctioning authority, how do I raise that objection? You know, I do not mind if my land fit six general what instructions he would have on this issue. We see who has signed it, who has given the sanction. At least we can permit you the no issue. But what you can grant me leave to amend draft amendment uh, mood today is. Uh, Permitted. But Lord you Lord already Lord. issued the notice as well as the yes, but, but then Lord Shabin now give me interim Reply is also fine. Reply is fine. Yes. But Lord Shabin may protect me by saying no final order to be passed. It's a sixteen seventy. But one is sixteen seventy, other is fifteen sixteen. What is your stand? Same issue will be there. No, no. What is your same? Draft amendment. amendment. You can say it's uh, permitted to be carried out uh, in three days' time. That reply can be. The additional reply can be filed by the other side. Considering the draft amendment and also. The group of petitions which this court is uh, deciding, the request is made for interim relief in terms of what is it? Uh, the no, assessment proceeding is going on. This is not covered by the No, not actually. It's, not assessment no. One. it's a uh, independent meeting. But seven small b in both branches. When is uh, when is the uh, assessment getting time by? But assessment, it will take some time. Lastly, is a final order not to be passed. It will protect mm -hmm. both sides. Mm -hmm. It's uh, June. It's June. Sorry, it's getting time barred in June. It should be getting time barred. Uh, I believe so. No, it will be December. December or March. March, we say that. Let the process of assessment be continued. The final and with the cooperation of the petitioner, the final assessment order. We shall keep this on the till the next date. We not passed. Should aim this on seventh of February. Black. Both black. Both identical. Both are identical. Oh. Oh so far as those fresh matters are concerned, you can just give it uh, all uh, fresh matters of 14, 15, 15, 16, um, and 13, 14. So we're issuing the notice and also similar order as we're doing in case of others. Thirteen, fourteen. Yes, but there are 
orders you can just take from one and uh, it's uh, identical orders will be passed. This is 15, 16. Yes. Now, Chips, this is not that uh, 148A issue. Mm -hmm. This 1314. Uh, here, neither the JKN dry shaft has been mm -hmm. uh, fulfilled. It's under the old scheme, mm -hmm. whereby uh, the objections have not been disposed of. All right, we'll hear you then. In that case, yes. And what about the other matter? The last other matter is also under the old law. Okay. Where the procedure has not been followed and we'll we'll hear you. Keep your patience too. Ten twelve is not there. Okay, you can just have it a little late. Time till tomorrow. Six zero six of twenty two. Learned uh, Senior Standing Council Mr. Patel requires time of one day to get the uh, instructions. <coughs> Pursuant to the order of this court dated 10 January 2023. Tomorrow at the top. There are two matters or two just matters. one? Not that arising from the same court. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> you needed to find out about the uh, overall chain. Yes, and the office and the instructions are being posted. But it appears as CIT appears as recorded. The info processes matter. Okay. What happened the to that? Three to six percent also. Sorry. With regard to our total credit to the Congress office, assessing officers, there's no response. Mm -hmm. But CIT appears as recorded. That the disallowance were made within the vicinity of three to five percent of the income processes. There's a five percent of uh, uh, addition is of uh, the rate of five percent only of the bogus purchase of the bogus purchase. CIT says twelve point five. 
tribunal says six percent. This main diamond is by which court? By this one. So if they have said about the six percent. The addition was made of five percent cross profit. What is a Text of Field Six Seventy Four of Two Thousand Twenty Two. This court on third January twenty three. It's only one decision that I need to submit. And this honourable court says once the total purchase is found to be hopeless, then the entire addition is. Fictitious invoices were there. Here, what was the case? Here also, the fictitious invoices were there, but the CIT renders a categorical finding that purchases were made from other parties, not from the alleged bogus parties. Therefore, on the last occasion, I said, I indicated this. At the most, this can be a case of inflation of expenditure. The books of accounts have not been rejected. No. But the CICFC says, in fact, he has entered the SS has entered into the bogus billing transaction. Though the goods were procured from other parties, not from the alleged bogus billers. Mm -hmm. And then the why would the SS would enter into such transaction? We need to impact their expenditure so that the gross profit. The profit is uh, shown less to that extent. So to restrict that uh, six percent is on a very lower side. This honorable court. The tribunal uh, on the ground uh, possibly so let me recollect. They said the uh, profit margin in the uh, in this area is a five to seven percent, and so therefore it is restricted to about six percent, right? Yes. Fifty-six carai. So my humble submission is this one. Even if the goods have been procured from other parties and the assessing office has not expected the sales, I cannot go beyond that. My humble submission is that where was the need to enter with, into transaction with bogus parties? Correct. Just to inflate the expenditure. That at the same it only 6% is on a very low side. Therefore, I indicate 25% is a norm. Therefore, Pavarlal Jain's case, which is dependent, we had asked you that what has happened to that. And it is, uh, uh, this is a combination of similar cases wherein purchases are shown from Pavarlal Jain, providing accommodation entry, and have restricted or enhanced in addition to the extent of 6%. So it's not just one case, there are other cases. So whatever you've done and whatever the department has accepted, we'll see about it. Those cases, the Sondra Court is already taken. At, at the most, if not bogus, but a case of inflation expenditure is there. The is page 37, that is a categorical finding by CIT. Mm -hmm. Yes. The last one, as held above, it is clear that the appellants have made purchases from elsewhere, but have obtained bills from the influence. So it's not a fictitious uh, transaction. One, the purchases are there. Purchases the are reason there. why the 
tribunal also said tribunal said at least there are there are purchases from some so you may be right that it is just to inflate the expenditure, expenditure. lesser profit mm -hmm. then to compare with gross profit rate in my observation there is what would be the magnitude of benefit delivered um, derived by the appellant is uh, the disputed question mind diamond it is relied on mm. The CITS says during the appeal proceeding, the AR has produced before me the copies of assessment done by many IOs at Mumbai. In case of beneficiaries of accommodation entries of the same Power Lal Group cases, in cases identical to the appellant, the IO have not made 100% disallowances, even if they've held that the purchases are bogus. They've made disallowances ranging from 3 to 5% of the impure purchases. A chart showing the detail of those assessment is annexed. Commissioner of Income Tax Mumbai have confirmed disallowances at 3% in different cases. You taken it further, you not taken it further. It is clear that AOs and the CITs are of the view that beneficiaries of accommodations entries have made a benefit of 3 to 5%. And the tribunal says that ordinarily the margin here in this area is 3 to 5%. That is the net profit. Huh. Huh. But here also, if you look at it, they've made the, the benefit to 3 to 5% of. So even if you say that the benefit is 3 to 5% because they've inflated to that extent. That is purely on estimation. That's why I'm saying. That will have to be followed. There has to be. You can't challenge. Either you show that there, this has been then set aside and this has been challenged right up to the Supreme Court or up to at least the Bombay High Court. It doesn't appear to be any case. So if your own officers in Mumbai, AOs, CITs, they have done it. The tribunal also have depended on the Bhavanlal's uh, group cases. Save all the aspect of uh, their profit margin in the industry. Precisely. There had been no rejection of any of these books of accounts by the AO. Uh, Brother Justice Bart is showing para 19 of the. Therefore, the that's why I'm saying the entire discount is not required to be because my assessing officer has not conducted an inquiry past days. Says mm -hmm. he has accepted. Only I am pitching my case on the aspect that there is a case of inflation of expenditure. Correct. So inflation of expenditure, you say that. But then why is your AO is not rejected even the books of accounts? Nothing. In, and it says, uh, look at para 19 of the... Please read. We find that... The, the assessing officer made additions only on the basis of third party information report of the investigation. The report of investigation number was not provided to the assessment. During the assessment, the assessment demanded a copy of statement by Dr. Balaji and his cross examination. A copy of such statement was not provided. The assessing officer nowhere rejected the demand of us. We find that the assessing file detailed evidence consists of details of purchase, bank address, purchase in which stock register, day to day register, and sales register. No comment was made by the assessing on the documentary evidence funded by the assessing. The sales of assessing was not disputed. No sale is possible in absence of purchases. The assessing officer estimated the additional account for the rejecting the books of account process. The budget CIT restricted the addition to the extreme 12.5% total purchase on by taking the view that the assessee from GP of less than 1.15%. In our view, the desalam is restricted by the line CIT of business on a higher side. The profit margin in the industry is 5 to 7%. It is settled on in case of distributed purchase shown from such Havana dealers. On the profit element embedded to avoid the possibility of revenue repairs to be disallowed. No doubt, the SSE has shown extremely low GP at 1.15 only, yet the disallowed at the rate of 12.5 is on higher side. This combination in similar cases when the purchases are shown from Horla G for providing foundation and restricted announced the addition to the extreme 
of impure dispute purchase. Therefore, taking the consistent the disallowance of purchase in the present case also restricts to six percent of the dispute. So the rejection aspect there's there's no very wise because both the authorities authority say it's a case of inflation of expenditure. This is a matter of estimation whether it's six percent, twelve point five. Our our court has said five percent. Your tribunal has said six percent. Additions. If you want to reduce in it by one percent, we can do that. <laughs> in some cases, this one will be twenty-five percent of the bookers' budget. Essentially, all you get is the interest with effort to maintain the fees. What happened in that case? You so, and we can understand that this was a, the the single case. All Bharlal uh, Jain's and case, where consistently all AOs, all CIT appeals in Mumbai. Have taken a stand. Therefore, we gave you an opportunity last time that allow us to, you know, then peruse as to whether there had been a challenge right up to the High Court, Supreme Court. We can understand nothing of the sort. Then why do we know enter into this? You much concern about uh, us not having enough files. So please do not do that. So, tax appeal six seventy four of twenty two. Agreed by the order dated 28 March 22, passed by the Income Tax Appellate Tribunal Surat in ITA number 1378HD17 for the assessment year 910. The appellant is before this court seeking to challenge the section by way of the present appeal. Paragraph, there's a C. Filed a return of income on 29th September 2009, declaring its total income at rupees one lakh seventeen thousand seven fifty two. The original assessment was completed on scrutiny on 28 12 2010, determining the total income at rupees two lakh sixteen thousand nine hundred. Paragraph: The information was received from Investigation Wing, in Mumbai. And his case was reopened under Section 147 of the Act. Subsequently, the assessment under Section 143.3 and 147 had been concluded on 25th February 2015 by making addition of rupees eight crore ten lakhs fifty six thousand four sixty nine. On account of the bogus purchases, paragraph it is alleged that the SSC firm received accommodation entries from Sri Pawanlal Jain Group. Sri Pawanlal Jain and his son Sri Rajesh Pawanlal Jain provided accommodation entries to various parties in the form of bogus. Unsecured loan and bogus purchases. The accommodation entry in the form of bogus purchases to the tune of rupees eight point ten crores into bracket rounded off is alleged against the SEC from Mrs. Rose Gems Private Limited, one of the entities controlled by Shivamalal Jain. Assessing officer on the ground that the SSC had accommodation entry. Decided to do to disallow the fictitious expenditure claimed by the SSC in the form of bogus purchases. While finalizing this, 100% of the bogus purchases claimed, 100% of the alleged bogus purchases was disallowed and added to the income of the SC. Paragraph aggrieved. Uh, SSC had uh, challenged the same before the Commission of Income Tax into bracket appeals. 
where the CIT appeals restricted the addition to 12.5% of the disputed purchases of rupees 8.10 crores, amounting to rupees 1 crore 1 lakh 32,060 by relying on various judicial pronouncement. Paragraph. Uh, The SEC preferred an appeal before the Income Tax Appellate Tribunal, ITAT, in and after, which partly allowed the appeal of the SEC, restricting the addition to 6% of the disputed purchases by holding that the tax authority not entitled to the tax, the, to, to tax the entire transaction, but only the income component of the disputed transactions to prevent the possibility of the revenue leakage. Full stop. The aggrieved petitioner, so aggrieved uh, re revenue has preferred this appeal. Raising following substantial question of law for determination of this court para four. You've heard the learned uh, senior standing counsel, Mrs. Rao, assisted by Mr. Karan Sangani, learned advocate for the appellant. It is fervently urged that though this court in tax appeal 200 of 2003. The gross profit rate of 5% of the is, is construed to be an average rate of profit in the said industry. And therefore, the court had added the 5% gross profit rate at the same time. The NK Industry versus Deputy Commissioner 292. CTR page 354 into bracket Gujarat provides for this court has held that the tribunal should have made addition of total purchases. Para six. Paragraph we had. Uh, Notice that the CIT appeals and the ITAT. No, before that, we have uh, given it a due consideration and also noticed the detailed order passed by the CIT appeals. 
where it is uh, notice two aspect one that the opportunity to cross examination was not provided and there had been no independent inquiries made by the assessing officer it report it relied on the report of the investigation being mumbai The CIT appeals was of the opinion that the assisting officer had not discussed in any of the details, books of accounts, documents, etc. Is not even examined nor found any defect in in the stock registers, books of accounts, as also other documents the appellant also produced day-to-day -day stock register details of purchases and sales the trading account and the stock registers It's shown that there is a nil opening and closing stock, which means that the purchases made during the year are all sold during the year. Also, it is out that this, if the sales are treated as genuine and impugned purchases are treated as bogus, then the stock will go into negative to the extent of impugned purchases. The day-to-day -day stock register shows the receipt and issue of diamonds and stock in hand along with the name of the party to whom the purchase and sale is made. The stock register is both rough diamonds as well as the polished diamonds. The statement of Shippon Lal Jain and the report of investigation wing was much relied upon. As against that, the CIT appeals noticed the copies of purchase bills, copy of bank statements showing the payment, day to day stock register showing incoming and outgoing diamond and daily stock tally, confirmation of the party from whom the Seed purchases were made. This having noticed that all payments were made from bank accounts, and all these uh, evidences had not been discussed by the assessing officer. With no word as to why. These documentary evidences were not acceptable either. You. The CIT appeals chose to follow 
the cases of beneficiaries of accommodation entries of the same Bawarlal group cases, where the SCIT, uh, the AO into bracket ACITs, ITOs have not made 100% disallowances, but the disallowance is ranging from 3 to 5% of the impugned purchases. You can now uh... Can take from here to no, you can just take from this to page thirty eight. This was uh, dealt with again in extent so by the tribunal. This wise para nineteen. Paragraph having found that the assessing officer had chosen not to reject. The books of accounts of the SEC and had made the estimated additions on the basis of the purchases both the CIT appeals and tribunal have concurrently and rightly held to make the additions which the CIT appeals had done at the rate of 12.5% of the impugned purchases, which have been reduced and restricted to 6%. It will not be out of place to make a mention that the assessing officer, the inquiry was based on the report of the investigation Mumbai. The copy of the statement of Pawanlal Jain and others had been asked for by the SEC, which also had not been provided, nor was he allowed a cross examination. This, of course, could have been a reason for the authority consent to restore the matter back to the assessing officer. However, noticing the elaborate evidence consisting the details of purchase, ban, etc coupled with then the couple with the sing officer and the CIT appeals dealing with the case of Mr. Pawarlal Chain and others involved with him. If the addition directed is of 6% of the disputed purchases by noting that the profit margin in the state industry is 5 to 7% without even going by the estimation of the possible profit margin in the industry. Koma, suffice to note that in all cases relating to Bawarlal 
Jane. Both the Singh officers and the CITPS Mumbai have chosen to make addition at the rate of 3 to 5% of the bogus purchases. That view of the matter. No purpose is going to be served in interference. There are concurrent findings with sound reasons. We'd also given an opportunity on 3rd January 2023, an explicit order. Noting that, that there is a reference of the group of cases of Pawanlal, Jain and others. The revenue is not in a position to bring before this court as to what had happened to all these <coughs> cases, whether they travel to the High Court or to the Apex Court. Since the text appeal does not raise any substantial. Before that, just a moment. This court in text appeal 200 of 2003 was required to decide the estimation of the gross profit. at the rate of 12.5% against the gross profit of 1.03% shown by the SEC. The court allowed the gross profit rate of 5%, holding that the 12.5% is drastically higher. In NK Industries versus Deputy Commissioner of Income Tax, 292 CTR page Yes, here they've added uh, instead of 6% to 25%, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Had added 25% uh, of the total purchases. The entire thing. The to 25%. There are six, which is on the two six. The tribunal once from the amounts the supplies, it was not incumbent on the business. Yes, sir.
is a question here. So the court added twenty point ninety eight. Court says uh, SEC cannot be punished since sale price is accepted by the revenue. So whatever was the sale price, is you you were not allowed to. Entire purchase is shown on the base of fictitious invoices debited in the trading. That's not a case here. It's not a fictitious purchase. The court had uh, considered. Uh, the addition of the entire amount on the ground that there are fictitious purchases. Factually different than what had been already held in Mayan Diamonds Private Limited. In other cases of Pavala Jain also, the additions paid at 3 to 5 percent. Where no further challenge possibly is there, or it has not been brought to the place. Dismissed. Oh, yes, dismissed. Number ten is the meeting matter. Yes, Mr. Vedant. Okay. Sorry for not being there in uh, slightly uh, late in episode. Uh, this is AY 2013-14, mm -hmm. where notices were issued under the old regime. So all those GK and dry shaft where objections uh, were to be called for and then uh, objections made and objections need to be disposed of. That entire mm -hmm. scheme of things will be applicable. So, uh, primary lordships, if my lordships would see mm -hmm. at page uh, 125 are the reasons. 125, uh, 125. Yes, which is my uh, just to have my summary of my submissions. Hmm. A is this that here I had all their GK and Raisha, where the objections need to be disposed of by a speaking order, is not done in this case. It is a change of opinion, and I have disclosed all true and material facts, and it is non application of mine. So to start with Lordship, this is a beyond four years reopening. Mm -hmm. uh, if I can, Lordship page 125, para 1. Mm. Para 1. Yes. Lordship, so, uh, brief details of the SSC, the SSC company so-and-so, AY so-and-so, declined total income so-and-so under normal position. 
रुपीज सो एंड सो फर्दर स्क्रूटिनी असेसमेंट अंडर सेक्शन वन फोर्टी थ्री थ्री of the act was finalized on so and so determine the total income rupees so and so under normal provisions of the act and and rupees so and so under section 115 jb of that so it is a scrutiny assessment it's a post scrutiny assessment lochis may kindly see para brief details of the information collected Sir, in this uh, page 125 para 2 hmm. yes page 125 para A para one says that it is there is already a scrutiny assessment under one forty three three which has taken place. Para one, mm. para one, uh, second paragraph, Lord. Yes. Uh, Lord, she is have annexed H page one twenty five. Yeah, Lord. Is it? Is it? Uh, rupees so and so under section one hundred and fifteen J B of the Act. Further scrutiny assessment under. Section hundred and forty three three of the Act was finalized on so and so, determining total income of rupees so and so under normal provisions of the Act and rupees so and so under hundred and fifteen JB of the Act. Para two, watch it. Brief details of the information collected received by the AO on verification of the case records. It is noticed that the assessee has claimed and was allowed service tax expenditure of rupees so and so. Therefore, watch it. This Clearly shows two things, Lord Chief. A, that there is no new tangible material. It is out of the records of the assessee itself that these details have been. Uh, this notice has been issued. And second is that this was claimed and allowed. So therefore, there is already this this particular expenditure is already uh, already taken care mm. during the original scrutiny assessment. And further, it was noted that the assessee had paid this amount in so and so as in service tax on export sales commission. This amount was not. This amount was being kept in the books of accounts as advance service tax receivable, which was to be set off against excise duty due to the decision of so and so. Credit is not allowable. The assessee claimed expenditure of that amount of writing of its ad advance service tax account as an expenditure of service tax pertaining to so and so and payment. Are also made in total in those financial years, and the assessee has page one twenty six lawship wrongly claimed such such expenditure in AY two thousand thirteen fourteen. Such expenditure claimed by the assessee in current year cannot be allowed as stipulated in section forty three B of the Act. As such, the claim of assessee accounting to rupees so and so was required to be disallowed. Lawship. Then uh, the the second issue is uh, there are two issues which have been raised in this reasons. Uh, the second issue is for, again at page at paragraph uh, second paragraph at page one twenty six. Further verification of the assessment record. It is seen that the assessee has brought back uh, brought back uh, brought back so and so equity shares at ten rupees at the price of forty per share. From its shareholders, the assessee has accounted profit of rupees so and so as on so and so. It is further evident from the record that during the year, the assessee has issued so and so bonus shares of face value of rupees ten each per share. Thus, shareholding pattern of the company remains the same in spite of the buyback of shares of so and so. The scheme of buyback of shares is a device to cover the provision on the section one hundred fifteen O of IT Act with with a colourable device of so buyback. So, once you say that one is, it's already been. Lordship scrutinized, in, right? Lordships. I'll mm. I'll just uh, summarize. Yes. Yeah. In some lordships, what has happened is mm. the assess the assessee filed a. It's a company. Assessee had filed a. The mandatory process also has not been followed. Is also not process. Is also not followed. A. In the original assessment under one forty three three, it was queried. It scrutinized. Ha! It, it was scrutinized. This particular issue with respect to service tax was. Was scrutinized. I can take my lordship to that. Second issue is with respect to buyback. Mm. This there is no new tangible material. My lordships are aware that post four years there are twin conditions which have to be uh, fulfilled. One is this that uh, there should not be any uh, failure on the part of the assessee to fully and truly disclose the material facts, which means that there must be some tangible material. Other than the disclosures already made by the assessing by the assessee for an assessing officer to be able to 
exercise its jurisdiction under 147 on the second aspect of buyback this what has happened is so after this issue of this particular notice i had replied i had called for the objections objections were these are the objections which i am reading after these objection i had i had given my reply or my objections with respect to the reasons which have been given right now those objections without disposing of the those objections a show cause notice came to be issued and subsequently assessment order has been issued the in the assessment order out of the two issues the second issue of buyback has been dropped there is no addition made to made with respect to that while with respect to the first issue which was already scrutinized hmm. in 1433 there has been an addition which was made so therefore so therefore i can i'll take my lordships if my lordships would be please stage what is so there are you can uh, take us to the scrutiny uh, where it has been already done lordships the service tax on export sale commission ladyship and by back uh, ladyship mm -hmm. uh, if my ladyship can be please to turn to page 84 Mm. 84 as regards to service tax expense as per note 23 the same is rupees so and so my uh, ladyship would also see the the reasons also cite the same amount this is 84 which is uh, my reply in the original scrutiny as as regard to the service expense as per note 23 the same is rupees so and so against nil expenditure in earlier year we have to state that in the financial year so and so so and so we had paid service tax on export sales commission and we were keeping the same as advance services receivable to set off against excise duty as per law we enclose here with a copy of the account of service tax balance sheet written of the written of during the year as well as service tax receivable account the earlier years we enclose here with the circular number so and so so and so of ministry of finance it so and so wherein para 5 there on there of they mentioned about the admissibility of the claim what is the date of notice date of the present uh, notice mm. is at page 123 which is 27321 so i missed 3 days mm. otherwise it would have been uh, under the new regime mm. Which my lawyers will find at page one twenty three. Anyway, we should note special C four twenty eight of two thousand twenty three. Petition is before this court seeking to challenge the action of the respondent authority in issuance of the notice on twenty seventh March twenty two twenty one issued by the respondent number one for the assessment year two thousand thirteen fourteen. In the assessment order dated thirtieth March twenty two passed by the respondent. The assessment order is already passed. Assessment order is already passed so without without disposing of my objections, which is a settled law as per G K N. And my lordships have. So why have you, at no point of time, had the question challenged that you allowed this to happen in a way? No, lordship. What has happened is. a uh, notice so was issued you have an appeal you have an appeal uh, to go for this lordship but this is purely without judge what has happened is mm. lordship are aware that once the notice is issued under 147 mm. calling up upon us to file a return of income yes, we while we right. file a return of income we call for the reasons for initiating 147 after that we file objection which are then disposed of by your order which we challenge before that Correct. but that that Order has never been passed. In my But then, why did you continue with the assessment, the proceedings of assessment? No, I am not. My lordships are right. So Therefore, you, you never, you never participated. No, I never. I in fact have stated, if my lordship would be pleased mm -hmm. to turn to one fifty three, page one fifty three, page one fifty three, at uh, or page one forty two for a moment, lordships, uh, para four. accordingly please consider this brief letter of objection along with our other uh, our earlier objection letter submitted in so and so 
and we once again request to drop your proceeding and and the proceedings initiated pursuant to it we therefore request your good self not to proceed with the reassessment proceedings till our objections are disposed of in light of the uh, guidelines laid down in gk and drive shop so and so and sarkari khan udyog mandal limited so and so accordingly the submissions of de of details requested with your letter dated so and so is requested to be postponed and take on up later now post this letter they directly issue a uh, hmm do we start the order or you want to still argue something you want to argue something no no i was just pointing out that i have not myself submitted to the assessment process i was shocked to receive uh, assessment order and the show cause notice preceding that what happened to the notice of demand which they issued on 30th march they have issued it they so have issued it issued? therefore i am before my lordships it is year back it was no no i have this this was filed much earlier in time it was lying in objection to be very frank uh, it was filed way back in uh, may they must have recovered also by no 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 we have also statutorily appeal has also been filed just to save the limitation of it no she you can't try on two years no 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 she that is i have stated it i have stated it in as and let then everything be decided by the no, 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 is, why, why can't the appellate authority decide even this I, they will have to issue a statute is is that i will have to deposit certain amount no she which is ah, you must have but appeal would not have been permissible without that no, exactly you, so therefore therefore file. i am before my lochi for two reasons a my lochi is aware that in all cases where alternative remedy is there in fact in all cases before where we come before my lordship to it an alternative remedy is there but my lordship do entertain in all cases where orders are challenged here i can't be today uh, left hand because the order is not passed i cannot be uh, said that you have to go to appeal mr matter it is when somebody comes at a stage where either the assessment the proceedings is going on one or demand notice is raised where they are seriously questioning challenging the process of assessment or if the appeal is not you, you can't have you can't ride on two horses no lordships i will it's not and mr mehta this is this is uh, of 2023 lochis lochis may kindly note when did you file no appeal ap appeal i filed it in may 22 itself my lochis may see the affidavit must have been decided did you check no no it is not decided cit appeal will be decided a year it will take couple of years so year, year. so a year as part it is not decided this, this is an instruction which I, and today the assessee has done all what it could do if order was passed i could have come before my lordship since they have completely short circuit with the statutory process i can't today be worse than what i would have if they have, would have followed the process special civil application 428 of 2022 petitioner is before this court seeking court to issue the writ of mandamus or certiorari 
or any other appropriate read or orders to caution set aside the notice dated 27 March 21 issued by the response number one for assessment year 1314 and the assessment order dated 30th March 2022 passed by the respondent on the ground of the same being arbitrary, discriminatory and in violation of principle of national justice. Paragraph. The petitioner is engaged in the business of manufacturing of dyes and dyes intermediates and trading in chemicals. It filed its return of income for the assessment year 13-14 on 30th September 13, which was selected for scrutiny and a detailed questionnaire with 41 queries was issued by the assessing officer on 24th July 2015. The paragraph, the petitioner, the petitioner submitted the required detail by various uh, communications and the original assessment by way of a scrutiny assessment under section 143.3 of the act has been finalized where the oral query limited oral query relating to claim of service tax on export sale commission of Rupees 25 lakhs, 23,444 was raised. The petition submitted its reply and upon being satisfied, no addition was made during the scrutiny assessment. One of the grievance on the part of the petitioner is that it received the notice under section 148 for reassessment under section 147. The reasons raised two issues, the claim of service tax on export sales commission and buyback of 12.50 Likes fully paid equity shares. <laughs> Objections were raised to the seed notice, where it pointed out that the reopening was beyond the period of four years and there will be no failure on the part of the SEC to disclose fully and truly all material facts necessary. And as all issues have been already gone into during the original assessment proceedings, it's a mere change of opinion. Paragraph.
notice dated 1st February 2022 indicated that no response of the petition had been received and the notice had been issued. On the ground that the objections of the petitioner had not been disposed of, it is in breach of the guidelines laid down in GK and Drive Shaft 259 ITR page 19, Supreme Court <coughs> paragraph. It appears that thereafter. The assessment proceedings also have been completed and the uh, Shoko's notice culminated into the assessment order. First of all, it further appears that uh, the demand of notice also was raised under section 156. After the order of 30th March 22. Petitioner is before this court seeking to question and challenge the non following of the mandatory requirement of disposing of the objections raised by it. We also have heard the learned advocate, Mr. Nitin Mehta, who has urged that the petitioner says to protect his own right has uh, filed an appeal. However, the fact remains that the base order, which is uh, in challenge before the appellate authority, is passed without following the required procedure of law and in complete breach of the directions issued by the Apex Court. Noticing the fact that much water has flown after the objections were raised against the notice of a uh, the reopening was issued and as the petition is already before the appellate authority, this court does not deem it appropriate to entertain this petition as petitioner cannot ride on two horses without entering into the merits of the matter. The appellate authority is surely to consider all aspects, including the one which have been raised before this court. Lachis well, may kindly consider this way is that you've already said so. I will have to my, my yes, Lachis, I will I will withdraw the statutory appeal because it's such a strong case. I'll see Lachis, I will not get any justice there. There I'll have to pay amount for uh, one and Lachis, I would be worst off. Lachis, I would be worst off. Is that all? All uh, so yes, please give me the second one, Mr. Mehta. You are already you have yeah. exercised that option of going to the appellate authority, which is a statutory appeal provided. We do entertain whenever there is a breach of principle of natural justice because that is permissible under the law. But when you're already before that authority, there's no reason why we should entertain this. There's no, absolutely no just question. file it to protect the statutory limitation. We don't understand. Do understand that is the only uh, otherwise I would then be not be entitled to file any appeal in case if any anything uh, lordship decides against lordships. I this this would I, my only I mean lordships have only one aspect lordship lordships would then open a floodgate for an assessing officer to not clear the objections and straight away go with the assessment order. And, Mr. and there, thereafter, uh, Mr. Mehta, what happens uh, after our order, we not here uh, no. to comment upon. It is for you to decide. We will only say this much that if you've chosen to come at this stage, you better go to the statutory remedy, which is available to you. 
because we cannot permit any of any SSC to ride on two horses. That is impermissible. You could have made a choice. You made a choice, and now you're before this court, so we, we're not watching. But if my logic can, uh, because this is such a strong court logic, I can only say this much. Or should I keep it tomorrow? I may take instructions from the client. If I can withdraw the statutory appeal, I can speak to the chartered accountant and be before my lordship because my lordship, this is a clear case where it could be petitioner needs to be before lordship. I can only. Also. The same SSC? Same so, SSC lordships. Uh, again, the SSC order has been passed, lordship. It is here in 15? It is 14 15. It's here, right. lordships may see that the amount which has been uh, assessed uh, here, in fact, though I've, statutory appeal has been exercised, I'm not uh, running away from that particular fact. The question here is, lordships, he has applied section 144. Where which is absolutely not permissible since I've always cooperated and I've given all the details required. So by exercising 144, what he has done is he has uh, he has rejected the books of account in that sense of under 144, and he has completely texted me on the gross amount. Let appeal uh, appeal to authority look into this. It's a, you can just guess this is identical. Very SSC, only the change, and you can you can say that the disposal of this appeal in no manner shall prejudice the right of the petitioner. And my lordship may also then say so that this may not be used by assessing officer in any matter, whereby my lordship just clarifies that this practice is deprecated by uh, by my lordships of not clearing the objections and uh, just if you say it all. All uh, contentions we've kept open for you to argue. So that uh, affiliate authority will never say it. when it comes from my lordships. Even in the new assessment proceedings, if 148 AD order is not passed, and then assessment order is passed, lordship. We, we have occasions. You've already said whatever we need. Yes, please call out. It's big. May I pray for the next week? 16? 16. 16 is uh, Mr. Mr. Methan. What is it about? If I can. Then it counts a long time. 23rd. Page. So many questions. Similarly, to our argument, the first three questions are the same. The first one covered in identical question is that it has been absence of material. Can it be considered as a complete Law has not changed now. In fact, what happened was this Somnia construction is still pending. Mm -hmm. is still pending and the appeals are only on that. Question one. First, first question, right? The submissions. What happened was that pending the one to three all pending as a the appeals. In that case, it is not possible to want to make the addition, but that is how What about yes. number D? D is something is not factual. Local entry provider. There, uh, 
What happened in that? They are not. They are admitted before the settlement was because offering the tax on that. You get one seventy four rupees. Another one is one case tax. Starts from page one seventy three. Agreed by the addition made in assessment order one seventy five. Let's see if I love you. Then one seventy four for him. Hmm. Yes. Last line, last three lines. Yes. The last three lines of that first three four lines. The assessing officer also recorded that HPK International Limited, a parent company, wherein the assessing is director, filed a petition before the settlement commission, wherein they accepted that unsecured loan transaction from nineteen party that time. Then on the first part, on page one seventy three, on last one, the agreed by the additions made in assessment order validity of quarter pass filed appeal. What appeal? CIT appeals are done challenging the validity. CIT appeal has not decided in favor of the assessment. Mainly that technical ground exception. Challenge the addition on legal ground. The additions is made on the basis of third party statement. And such statement are not incriminating evidence found during the course of yeah. such actions. Therefore, no addition can be made. Okay. Okay. But no, no. But then this file a petition before settlement commission wherein they accepted the unsecured. So they accepted. Yes. But then assessing officer made the allowance of. Uh, Interest paid no, on various. It was on two counts that uh, loan as well as one of the interest. Hmm. At least should be paid on that loan. On both accounts were different. The question E is with regard to interest. Question E is. But then ultimately it was uh, Somia Constructions. Yes, which that said. is the case. But in the first uh, question, if I lose them, our remaining will be accounted. So we just admit one only. One, three, and Maroto. One and remaining two Maroto. That is that will go. That will also also. Let us look at the tribunal. Eight one eighty four. Para eleven is with regard to first question. There are so many questions as well. And para twelve. Just a moment. One eighty four. Hmm. So, Rohini Builders is one of them. Rohini Builders, the Ramdev Finance Group. Yes. Two districts. Such a kind of submission is very related to the number of parent companies. While offering tax voluntarily before the settlement of the commission, accepted that these parties are focused. So, that contradiction is cash. And on the investigation, which was referred to by the assessing officer, Just two paragraphs on the fact itself. Number three, one seventy-three. Ten lines from the bottom. Ten to the end. The assessment officer doing assessment recorded that.
when full particulars please read para 14 page 185 On the contrary, if you look at it, para 13, okay. the tribunal says assessing officer has not made any specific comment on various documentary evidences furnished by the SEC, nor any independent investigation was carried out. Thus, in absence of any adverse material collected by a single officer, no additional is warranted. One, it also then Roini and the packaging said that when full particulars, including confirmation with names, addresses, PAN, and copy of income tax return, balance sheet, profit and loss, competition of total income, all creditors and lenders were punished. The loans were given through checks and reflected in balance sheet. The assessing officer was not justified. Yes. Look at the tribunal's own observation in the first page, page 173. This case, in my opinion, is that probability principle would come in up later. Read facts of the case are that the search action under section 27 was carried out in case of HVK group of Surat on Surat. In the search action, certain information was seized from the residence of the assessee who is one of the director of Surat. So, consequent upon the search and notice that the section was served upon the assessee to file the return of income of the assessment of the is from the notice. The assessment file is not pursuant to the assessing officer after serving the notice of the action. The assessing officer during the assessment recorded that on verification of return of the income. It is seen that the assessee has received unsecured loan from various parties full of poor credentials. The assessee covers loan from loan to loan to loan. All these concerns are bogus provided the concept of loan entry provider like Madanla Sohn. The assessing officer further noted that the Madanla Jain was arrested under prevention of money laundering act on so on. The assessing the enforcement director recorded his statement where he has stated that he is an entry provider of bogus names. Mr. So Praveen Jain, the assessing officer, uh, the assessing officer recorded that the statement was recorded by DGI investigation through the Mumbai on so on, so where he has admitted as bogus and uh, admitted as bogus entry provider. Sunil Jain, provider of Mayu Jams, is an employee of Praveen Jain. The assessor further noted the assessor is not only has also paid interest on such and it's secured loan and other loan. The assessor officer on the basis of this observation to conclude that the transaction of unsecured loan are not genuine according to the issue of the Coupled with that, 
the parent company. Foreign directly center, these are movers. For parent company, it is focus. For the SS, it is not focus. And simply because one of some statements, self-serving statements were given by the those one of who are changing the stand before the CID appeal, also to the notice in the 136, that we are genuine party. We are not being involved. Now consistently for self-contact. So for the SSI model, he cannot back out from the statement or the stand taken by its own parent company before the settlement. In, 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 in your point of that admitted side before the settlement commission, the rest of the things in my submission could be irrelevant, including the subsequent back out of those model persons before the CIT. See, only if uh, this question would have a bearing on uh, the Somya's outcome, we can admit it. Otherwise, uh, if you look at it, there are three criteria for 68. And the tribunal says all the three are fulfilled. And you are right, you know, when you say that if in case in the parent company, if they say it is to be focused, but they said that we have three parameters and you know these the well laid down parameters. So the tribunal only only on the ground it is all the three fulfilled. So where is the portion of addition? So my, my submission is that order for genuineness in view of their own stand, parent company stand before those commission uh, settlement commission. So your first question falls your first question falls the this question. This will become the academy. Rather and we do not want to decide it right now because we do not want your first question to Some be Some observation that after the first question beginning to... Otherwise, you know, technically, since the tribunal has independently given finding on all the three questions, the finding on remaining two on merits would not be there. Or there is no question of my uh, insisting or my requesting the honorable court to actually on those two questions. Okay. The actually one first question would be taken as one of remaining two are not entered. It's going to be a futile exercise, in my opinion. But remaining two, we, we are right now considering only um, but, uh, one is D, D, and e. D and E. So we would say if only first question is uh, in affirmation in favor of revenue, the D and E will be allowed. It will be entertained. So it's not otherwise. That would be sufficient. Because right now. Something is kind of required. That would be sufficient. Take care of my For present, uh, we find that there is uh, there's nothing uh, said about it. Swami is pending before the Supreme Court. In a review. In a review. Otherwise, the Supreme Court is uh, held in favor of the SEC. So, there are different grounds for the penalties as well because of the particular circumstances. All six years will appear and
So those the one thirty three six notices were upon the Malur concerned person of those who don't uh, provide uh, Malur has a statement recorded of the respondent assessor. This is what my impression. Seventy-six. So those parties uh, who initially said before the uh, investigation that some bogus entry provider, they subsequently make change their stand before the CIT appeal pursuant to the notice number one thirty-six, and coupled with that, Malod. Uh, this only one that side to last. Three minutes. Only, only, only that factual predicate I said.
Next matter, my lord, uh, it's a group of three matters. Lead matter is not listed, and they are still at stamp from the moment. Yeah, so, yeah. addition, I request for a tangle. I thought that I request for a not for a tangle. I'm not confident. Given circulation along with those two matters and meet them right quick. Those are stand number may I give you three? This is stand number three six four eight seven of two thousand twenty two. Three six four double eight of two thousand twenty two. Six seven zero of two thousand two. Not to sign. I apologize for not remaining present in the morning when the matter was called out. I apologize. I absolutely bow down. But I apologize. This won't be repeated again. Not just burning. 
but if serial number 21 and 22 we have filed retirement pushes but the instructing chartered accountant being unwell he could not send the return instructions so may i request for next monday in the meantime we'll receive the return instructions i'll uh, place on record the instructions from the chartered accountant stating that you're no more appearing in the matter so the lordships may issue notice to the appellant The instructing chartered accountant has been informed, but he being unwell is not attending the office. So he said, yes, yes. So he, yes, electric, the instructing chartered accountant would in turn inform the party. In fact, that client had called me in the afternoon, today afternoon. They are coming to meet me in the meantime. A lot can be posted for next week. So, yes. <laughs> yes. I've uh, filed a note. Please, Allah Chips. Uh, we have uh, uh, filed a note before the registry. But we'll obtain necessary instructions with respect to this, or I'll send a letter intimating them that we're not appearing to RPAD and place it in record your logic. So, as per rule 133 sub rule 1, I am seeking time so that I can obtain instructions from the client, necessary instructions, and I shall intimate them directly, your logics. Learned senior advocate, Mr. Tushar Himani, who he was an advocate at the relevant point yes. of time, he was an advocate for the appellant at the relevant point of time. Due to lack of proper information and material from the client is not, is, is seeking to retire from the matter. Both the matters or all the three matters? No, both the matters. The, the third 21 one, and 22, yes. you can say that uh, let rule 133 of the Gujarat High Court rules be followed. The matter to be posted on 23rd. Please, deeply mm -hmm. obliged.
Okay. And in what about number 23? Your logics have return, uh, received return instructions from the client. They have requested. Withdraw uh, your appearance. So they're not going to uh, make an arrangement. So uh, this Who, is. Dishman, Dishman Karbuja. Yes, Who I, generally I, appears before you, uh, The papers have been handed over to the client, and most probably Mr. They're Suparkar here. now appears. Mrs. So, Suparkar, would you uh, please come forward? We do not have the papers also, so All I right. could not. This is they're withdrawing the appearance in the text appeal. And look, if you are coming, then we may not issue the notice. And if you're not coming, it's, uh, I, I don't know, but if they are I, otherwise or ordinarily uh, your client, you may just check with them. We keep it on 23rd. Twenty third. If you do not have instructions on twenty twenty third, we are keeping it. Mr. Patel, uh, who's appearing in this? Mr. M. R. But is uh, Mrs. Rawal. Mrs. Rawal will be appearing. The name of uh, Mrs. Uh, Kalpana Rawal for the appellant shall be shown. In the course title matter to be posted on 23rd. Yes, you can you can uh, call out uh, from 25th, uh, 25th, 26th, 27th. So let's see if anybody has got. Ms. Parik, uh, this 2019 matter, anything? May I request for next Monday? Please. All right, 23rd. Please, oblige. Second matter also? Yes, good job. That is a group of matter. One lead matter is to come up on 28th of February. What is the matter about? It is 150C most probably, but uh, I'm requesting for to be tagged along with the three uh, battery alert. 148. What is the facet? Sorry, I'm not sure. What is the facet here? Uh, Sanction of Principal Chief Commissioner. Sanction in right. merely a mechanical manner. Satisfaction in detail. We find the they will receive the rejoinder that is fine because a uh, copy is lying with me, so I'm not too sure. When is the when are the group matters coming? 28th of February, your lordship. Okay. Which is the good which is the lead matter? Just a moment. Uh, SCA 18983. 18983 of 2019. 19. To be taken with 18983 of 2019. Yes. Yes. So, I'll file the rejoinder also because it's lying in my file. It has not been filed. It's prepared. So, I'll file in the meantime. She's permitted to file the rejoinder. Copy of which should go to the other side. Yes. Please. This is a petition to reopening under the old regime. The short issue is this that the, the owners had introduced the land in the partnership firm. They got their valuation certified by the sub-registrar uh, stamp duty authority. 
still the department and they paid the stamp duty accordingly and with the entry of the partnership from but the department says that 50c will be applicable so our contention was that since the duty is as per the stamp duty valuation 50c will not apply and secondly the 453 is also a presumption so there can be a presumption on presumption so that that on this ground all the five identical five Is this has shown the short term capital? Short term capital. You know, their contention is basically that 50C will apply so that they can make a difference between the so called stamp duty value and the value credited in my books of accounts. But you know, in view of section 453, the fiction is that whatever amount is credited is a full value of consideration. So you one cannot substitute that consideration by applying 50C. Because so 50C itself is a living provision. Language of you know, section 45.3 is very clear. These are all admitted matters. Pardon? They are admitted. We are all admitted. Admitted? It's only at a notice stage. Hmm? And it is notice only. And in those days, the practice was that at the time of admission. We can we can finish hearing it. Because if, what, if the rule is then, I think much more time than this four or five years will go. No, we do not mind. We don't we don't intend to even admit it. If you want to argue, we can. Uh, I can, please, and, can it be next week? Well, next week, I don't know. Next week. Next week. No. matter to be posted next week for final hearing. Public. Yes, please give. It's a. Uh, mm. Mm. Yes. We're taking up the we're taking up the priority matters. Uh, uh, so, all those who have uh, requested, we can. Yes. <laughs> yes. Now, Chip, in this case, uh, one thirty three six notice was issued on date six two two thousand nineteen. In the name of the deceased, that is Mr. Arvind Dave. Who okay, expired on six August. Six uh, six February two thousand nineteen. One thirty three six notice that is summons was issued. It's a six September two thousand sixteen. Six February two thousand nineteen. Your archives. Page thirty one. Page, Page thirty one. Thirty two is. Arvind Bhai Dave, no? 32 is the death certificate, your lordship. That is 6-9-2016. He expired. Hmm. <coughs> Did you intimate the authority concern? Lordship. Did you intimate? Uh, lordship, we have time and again intimated. Uh, page number 35, your lordships. May I read your lordship? Uh, 
What is the challenge? Uh, now, Chief, the challenge is that various notices have been issued in this case. Notice under section 133.6, the first notice that was um, the summons that was issued to the deceased. Then notice under section 148. <clears throat> Page 31 is the first notice, Your Lordship. That was issued to the disease. <coughs> 6 February 2019. Lordship. Now, Lordship, this is not received by <clears throat> the petitioner. Then, Your Lordship, the second notice is on page number 33, that is the 148 notice. Issued in the name of Kashmir Adana, being the legal heir of Arvind Dave. Now, Lordship, where, how the respondent has assumed Kashmir Adana as the legal heir is again without any inquiry because. In any case, let, let them deploy. Is, have, the, have you filed your reply? Yes, I huh? In fact, uh, petitioner is a legal heir and notice has been issued in the name of legal heir. Issued on a legal heir. Please kindly see page 34. But Your Lordship, she has not ever stated that she is the legal heir. She has not even applied on the portal that she is the legal heir. The bar can deny the fact that she is not the legal heir. Page 35. Your letter to the authority. Lordships. I am in receipt of notice issued under section 148 dated so and so on 13th uh, June 2019 as legal heir of late Sri Arvind Shantilal Dave. This notice is received by me from the neighbor Sri Paresh Singh residing adjoining to the address at 71 Alembic Nagar where my father late Sri Arvind Dave resided before his demise on 6th. Father. father. But Lordship, I am survived by my three more sons. So there are in total there are four siblings. Now only how am I assume presumed to be the legal heir? Now under the Income Tax Act, if we see, then you have to register on the portal to be the legal heir of the deceased. Nowhere you are the daughter. I'm the daughter. Yes, sons also. Three sons, your lordship. That is state. Um, are you a married daughter? Married daughter. Page number six, your lordships. You are a co-partner. You must also share the responsibilities. Lordship, then all the... Be on the estate of the disease, not the personal liability of the legal life. Then, Lordship, then... you forego the, your all uh, claims on uh, the father's uh, estate. But then, Lordship, then all the sons should also be made the legal life. Then even they should be made uh, the party to the notice. What is, uh, what is this uh, notice about? Tell us. Lordship... What is the notice about? It's a reopening. 148, your lordship. Why is it the daughter has been... Uh, page 84. Mm -hmm. Do we have quite exhausted the page 84? Mm -hmm. Is it that certificate produced by the SSP petitioner? Where it has been stated legal and Kashmir either way. On the right and bottom side. Page 84. In page 85. Where do you find in the Galen? The right hand bottom side. The hundred and middle is Kashmira is the way. 
who must have written and why is it handwritten and how do you depend exactly. on that this dead certainty has been produced by the petition so there is a assessing officer does not have the dead certainty and page 85 mm -hmm. the service part mm -hmm. it was so 26 2019 a call was made to miss peravi who is the daughter of the present petitioner and they said you serve some they will appear therefore they have filed exhaustive reply to that but your lordship it is after three months the the notice is dated 31st march 2019 it has been served on 13 june 2019 three months and your lordship and the on the address if the ssc is not available then under the income tax act the procedure is that the notice has to be affixed on the premises that is what the law says And your lordship, when I have annexed the speak, please speak. So, what is intriguing is that, yes, yeah, she's an heir by all means. But why? I mean, you select the heir. The death certificate is produced, and she has only responded to it. And we have come in position of this death certificate when legal is still questioning our very very. How do we choose each and every representative? Have they not intimated you? No. But Lordship, before intimation, and what otherwise is a way for you to ascertain? How do you say that we do not have any mechanism for ascertaining as to who's the legal? She has not intimated the details of her brothers. She says I'm not the only legal. So give the names of other brothers also. Because all of you would be, if your father has left any estate, uh, all of you would be responsible. It is not a case of a notice on the dead person. Lord it's she, a legal heir, but then you may be right. You might be saying that I, why, why select me? But why not you also? Not sure. But the then, daughters, you can't be just having a share only in the estate. You know, you also have a responsibility. All the subsequent notices, the, even the show cause, all, all have been issued on the deceased. On the address of the deceased. No, the address is different. It is addressed even, on Shrimati Kashmira Dave. Then the address is of the deceased. Lordship, it's on Arvind Dave. The next three consecutive notices, if you may see your Lordship. Please, please, page number 43. The one which I read is on. Uh, page 43, your Lordship. Page 43, your Lordships. Hmm. Did you write? Rebuttal of objection raised against the reopening. The order disposing objections is passed on the disease, your lordship. Mm. Then your lordship on page number 49. See, the notice under 148 is on you. Shrimati Kashmira Dave, legal heir of the late Sri Arvind Dave, 71 Alembic Nagar. But lordship, that is on 13 September. Mm. It has been served to the the neighbor, whether it is served, not served, the right service was affixing on the door or the conscious part of the premises. Page number 49, your lordship. What, are you, what are you challenging? Lordship. What are you challenging? Which notice are you challenging? Lordship, all of these, I mean, the proceedings are in continuation of illegality only, your lordship. Only they are on the disease. Only an extra seat that is one forty notice. Sorry? The prayer contains only an extra seat, which is the one forty eight notice, which has been issued in the name of the law. The only contention is the resolution of jurisdiction is proper. Two portions set aside the impure notice, 31st March 2019. Next, we'll see that page 34. This is the notice. It has been issued the name of legal. She's written her uh, address of Ashwamek duplex and reply to you at page 35. After that, your lordship also the notices have gone to the diseased only, starting from page number 43. 
that is the clerical mistake i can satisfy that as well but lot 292b doesn't allow that is not okay. a clerical mistake it does then put the judgments also on that In page forty-five, the petitioner does participate in the proceedings. She did ask for reasons of uh, reasons recorded by the assessor. Mm -hmm. Did you say anywhere in any of your uh, correspondence or objections that you are not the only one? Lordship, page number thirty-five. And our time and again asked <coughs> the basis on which I am treated as the legal heir. You participated also, right? No, she was not participated. I've continuously denied. The petitioner asked for a copy of the business report. Not sure because the show cause notice and everything is being issued to me. Please give the details of your your uh, brother's names. Not sure I've given. Where is it? Page uh, number six. Where are they? Where are they? Where is their address? Page number six. Where is the address of theirs? And where you? Where have you intimated this to the department? We are not going to cause this because this is upon you. Subsequent correspondence okay. which has been issued is your right. It is upon a dead person that they will, they will correct. But the notice is not something upon a dead person. If you want to save your brothers by not giving or disclosing the details, you can give the disclose the details of their. Uh, it's not that I have to say my brothers is, and is, can... The notice uh, will need to be. If there are liability on the estate, if he has not left anything, you don't need to worry. If he has left something, everyone is responsible. But your lordship, one, section one forty is the foundational requirement. Now, when the the definition one. of cohere, which is at page number six, yes. If he is not the and your lordship, the income tax act says that the person is treated as legal heir if it if that person has registered himself or herself on the portal of being the legal representative or the legal heir. Mm -hmm. Page one fifty nine. Yes. Approach one says where a person dies. Hmm. Where a person dies, this legal representative shall be liable to pay and some if the deceased would have been liable to pay if he had not died. In the like manner be the same as the deceased. For the purpose of making an assessment. Of the income of the deceased and for the purpose of levying any sum in the hands of legal representative in accordance with the provisions of section 1. Any proceeding taken against the deceased before his death shall be deemed to be taken in the We are not considering the process. So, clause uh, subsection if the legal representative of the deceased shall for the purposes of this act be deemed to be an assessment. Suspicious CA 22351 of 2019. Uh, you disclose that you have nothing to do with your father's estate. You disclose that yes. on affidavit that you have not inherited anything. You are not then and give the detail of your brothers to the authority concerned. It's not a notice which is illegal. But your lordship, the one forty eight notice has been. It is dated March two thousand nineteen. Served 
your lordship if you may see served on their the department itself is saying that they have served it in september 2019 what do you mean i mean june june 2019 what do you mean i provided justification page 15 in your lordship i have time and again asked the department as to how i am considered the legal heir you need to point out to the department that you are not the legal heir that you have nothing to do with the property of your father you not inherited anything and then you can't be made liable otherwise you are a legal heir you are a daughter of mr arvind the petition personally not liable on the estate of the deceased exactly petitioners before this court seeking to question the action of the respondent authority petitioner challenges the validity of the notice under section 148 of the income tax act issued on 31st march 2019 whereby the respondent is issued it according to the petitioner without confirming as to whether petitioner is a true and only legal heir of late sherwin by shanti bai dave paragraph the petitioner is an individual residing at ashwamegh duplex samta road shubhanpura vadodara her late father sherwin bai dave left for heavenly abode on 6916 was job a summons was issued on 62 2019 on the last address of his of her father 71 alambic nagar refinery road gorwa vadodara 390003 as per income tax database record which was served upon the neighbors instead of affixing the same on the premises for the reasons known to the pit, known to the respondent paragraph it is a grievance of the petitioner that there is no signatures of the recipient she parsing no is mobile number is attested the respondent issued a notice under section 148 on 31st march 19 in the name of the petitioner which was served upon shripati singh on the neighbor who handed over the same to the petitioner there are no names or signature of the recipient or mobile number to attest to its uh, receipt it is also the say of the petitioner that she has a siblings namely divyang kumar dave bhavesh kumar dave and yagnesh kumar dave she is the youngest of the lot and is married paragraph she filed a reply raising all grievances the one of the chief grievances that after 3 months of after a long time the notice has been served upon her and the reply though was submitted after 3 months the respondent uh, the respondent had submitted that the petitioner is the legal heir as per the death certificate petitioner's objection to the reopening of assessment on 5th july 2019 has been seriously challenged with the following prayers paragraph we notice that uh, information under section 133 into bracket 6 had been called for in the name of sherwin by the way however the base notice under section 148 is upon the legal heir of the deceased who passed away on 6 september 2016 as per the death certificate Paragraph affidavit in reply on behalf of the respondent has come on the record. 
prayers, you must seek huh? prayers. So, where they have denied all these aspects. It is urged that the petitioner is a legal heir. Inspector of ITO Ward 1, 2, 3 of Vadodara had the deputed to the serve the notice SEC, visited the given address of the SEC and made inquiries with the neighbors who said that uh, there are family members and they had called the daughter Miss Kashmira on the phone. No, and, and had called the daughter on the phone. However, her daughter, Paravi, was handed over the notice. Uh, her, her daughter, Bhairavi, talked over the phone and asked them to hand over this to the neighbor. The reliance is placed on section 159. Which it speaks of uh, who can be called the legal heirs under the text laws, under the IT Act, legal representatives. Chapter 15, under the heading of liability in special cases. It's a detailed uh, affidavit and reply, which is filed to say that uh, the notice under 133.6 was issued to the SSC calling upon the details of cash deposits made. The debt certificate was submitted without forwarding a letter. The debt certificate had reflected the name of Shrimati Kashmir Adave written on the certificate as legal heirs and therefore she had been issued the notice. Notice under section 148 is upon the heir and not on the deceased person. Paragraph, you've heard the, the rejoinder affidavit also has been filed, which may not be required to be elaborated at this stage. Paragraph, we have heard the learned advocates on both the sides. It is, uh, it, it is a challenge to the notice under section 148 issued by the respondent, which is in the name of the daughter of the deceased Although he has three other sons, the name of uh, the petitioner was on the death certificate, which has been, it had been tendered to the department. That's what page 58 in the research says in response to 136. Which had been tendered to the department in response to Lord, the... On page number 38, your Lordship, the bank statement hmm. also reflects with Arvind Dave. The name of Yagnesh Kumar Dave. In any case, you are one of the heirs. If there are other heirs who are also responsible, you can tell the authority. We will also tell in our order that they should make everybody responsible for that, not just one heir. Or you will be responsible to the extent you will inherit from your father. Because you cannot deny that unless you can say that you have nothing, you not inherited anything, you have nothing to do with that. Let the department then take a call. Sorry? No, no, but then others. No, not four others, but then the others. You can join them as the legal heirs. Otherwise, it will become too selective. You know, the, you can choose to leave others and you can do it against one particular legal heir. There you're right. Absolutely. No, you're not supposed to be hunting. You're not supposed to be going after each heir and then find out. But then to the extent their liabilities, you can uh, take it from this. Because you, you will not be, you're not a civil court. You will not be deciding which to which extent they've inherited. All those details will also is fact finding uh, issue. So it is for them to then tell as to what happens. Here we are, it's a limited ground. All these questions could be uh, raised before the authority concern. We'll keep it open for you too. Then your lordship, in that case, can I withdraw the petition? You can withdraw the petition, but then you will not have a privilege of some of the observations that we're making or the directions that we're giving to the authority concern. 
but we leave it to you. We cannot uh, insist on it. In this case, he could also make Yagnesh Dave as the legal heir because he was the joint holder with the bank account. In which you can use your names of your other Lordship, whatever it is, it's, 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 what did you say? Uh, all uh, this is no, you can say uh, we have heard the learned advocates up to there, you can see. Uh, at this stage, the learned uh, advocate, Ms. Sanupursha, seeks to withdraw this petition, keeping all issues open, also, permit, while also permitting the petitioner to raise the various challenges, including treating her as the legal heir, leaving other heirs open for the officer consent to decide in accordance with law and without entering into any uh, merit of the matter, petition is disposed of. This disposal shall not come in the way of the parties in raising the contentions. Yes. It's a dead person. Please. Special C five four one four of twenty one. Where is the notice, <clears throat> Mr. Patel? Page thirteen to page nineteen. Pravin Kumar Talavia. Where is his uh, death certificate? Page forty nine and page fifty eight. Forty nine. Please, Your Honour. Twenty two eleven two thousand eighteen. He passed away on twenty second eleven. 18. Please allow. And these notices have been issued on 15th of uh, December 2020. 15th of December 2020. Factum was not informed prior to issuance of notice. Yes, Sorry? Factum of death of the assets was not informed prior to issuance of notice. Subsequently, Subsequently once it, has it, been it has been several. So uh, you never. Then what did you do? You should have at least dropped it and then issued against the legal aid. At that time, they had. At that said, time, it's one to be the same. Petitioners before this court uh, seeking to challenge the action of the respondent authorities with the following prayers. You can write down the prayers. The short question is as to whether the notice under section 153C issued against the uh, against Pravin Kumar uh, Bayabai Talavia for the assessment year 1314 under section 153c of the income tax act on 15 December 2020 could be sustained when he already has passed away on 22nd 11 2018 paragraph you have heard the learned advocate Mr. Darshan Patel for the petitioner and learned senior standing counsel Will come. Mrs. Mrs. Rawal, assisted by learned advocate Mr. Sangani. We notice that uh, the certificate of death, it had been uh, sent to the authority concern. Afterwards, this notice had been issued. However, it had continued with the proceedings and hence it's approached this court. Seven assessment years are there. 1314 to assessment year 1920. Since oh. it, please. 1314 to uh, 1920 assessment 1920. year. You're relying on this decision. Upendra Bikha by the size. Please alert. SLP is also. This decision relying on special CA double two double four one of 19 and allied matters where the court has uh, disapproved has decided the identical issue and disapproved issues of notice on the deceased.
relevant paragraphs i'll just say allowed it will be if law permits if the law permits the revenue shall be entitled to issue the notice in accordance with the law Lordship, the, the assessment orders and notices will also have to be quashed. I had filed a draft amendment. The uh, the orders have been stayed by this honourable court. You can say all cons all with all consequential, all consequential orders will be quashed. My question is: even if I issue one particular notice, again, do you come with a period of limitation? That one fifty three officer record is satisfaction that year. Now we are issuing. But then, but then, but then, but then you you were uh, at the relevant point of time. If you would have dropped it and then initiated the actions, that could not have come. Then now it has become time bad, so they can't take any action. So that will have to be in accordance with the law. Yes, they can't by limitation. At that time, had they dropped the proceedings, they had sufficient time to issue. Yes, correct. Much of life. It's against the non-existing. Uh... Yes, Manas, over here the assessment order is passed against a non-existing person. Uh, here is a case which is sought to be remedied by the Finance Act 22, hmm. where the original notice was issued against a person when it was alive, the, the entity. Uh, please see the 143 2 notice came to be issued upon INOX renewables as if there was on 23rd of September 2019 at page number 37. Thereafter, the composite scheme of arrangement took place. I informed them time and again that, sir, you are now, after the scheme was approved, you are now issuing us the notices, including the show cause that is come drop assessment order, is upon the entity which is right now not in existence. Yet they continue to issue notices, ignore our uh, replies, and pass the assessment order upon a, in the name of the person which is no longer existing. So uh, the case of would, would the amendment not come to the rescue? It's not a retrospective amendment. It clearly says we defect from one four twenty two. One four twenty two. So therefore, the amendment will not come to this rescue. What is their stand? They say that yes, you did inform, but you did not challenge the one forty two notice. But 143 I could not have because at that time issuance of 143 2, there was no fault. What is in fault is the subsequent notice says that the draft assessment order and the assessment order. They say yes, you had informed the NFAC regarding the change. They accept it. Please see at page number 302, para 7. Hmm. Yes. With the reference to paragraph 3.2, the response denied and also, also it is submitted that in the presence of the notice of 1432, response issue was annex renewables. The case was then transferred to NFAC. Subsequently, the SSE appears to have informed the jurisdictional officer about the sanction of the scheme of arrangement of 10th March 21. The SSE had then filed replies on 13, 31st August, 10 September, 20th September, on merits before the face assessment, wherein the SSE had also informed about the scheme of arrangement. However, in the state replies, the SSE had not challenged the issuance of notice. I could not challenge that notice at all. All right, we'll continue hearing tomorrow. Well, uh, and all those uh, who have sought the priority, we shall uh, keep it. Please keep the matters by a separate uh, in upper court board. Well, it's, Mr. Suparkar, 72 is also deceased person. 72 can go. 72 can go. Kajabai, you can give it to us. 72. 2569 22. is before this court oh, yes. seeking to question the notice under section 148 issued on 31st March 21, issued in the name of Rajesh Kumar Soma Bhai Patel on the ground that he was no longer alive when this notice was issued. Which is the date of issuance of notice? 31st March. 31st March, yes. He passed away on 25th 
December 2016. The death certificate was uh, tendered to the department after, after the notice was issued. Paragraph. We were the, the, this court issued the notice uh, and also on 7th February 22, notice of final disposal and uh, protected the petitioner by way of an interim relief. Quorum Justice Padewala, as his lordship then was, and Nisha Thakur. Uh, Leonard, uh, we were the Leonard advocate, Mrs. Parker, and Leonard senior standing counsel, Mrs. Uh, Rawal. Assisted by learned advocate Mrs. Sangani. Admittedly, this is a notice to the dead person. Decision. In this regard, the issue is well settled by way of a decision of this court and various other courts. No such notice is permissible under the law. The attention of the respondent authority is also <coughs> drawn at the after once the notice had been issued, it's not an error which is curable under Section 292, Capital P of the IT Act. Allowed. Allowed.